Hey, what it do? It's your boy Cap G. Subscribe to Rodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, sir. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is King T, chilling on Rodium Radio. Tune in, subscribe every Sunday and Wednesday. Fucking with my man Tony A. The Wizard. West up, this Lazy Dub, and you're tuned in to Rodium Radio right here with Tony A. The Wizard. On every Sunday and Wednesday, 7 p.m. Make sure you like and subscribe there. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm right here at Local Negro, Tony A, Rodium Radio. Tune in. Yo, yo, what's up? It's your boy MTO right here with Tony A, the Wizard on Rodium Radio. Make sure you like and subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, everybody? It's your homegirl, Lovely, and I'm right here at Rodium Radio with my boy, Tony E. The Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and check him out every Sunday and Wednesday. It's Nina Beretta with Rodium Radio and Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in Sundays and Wednesdays. Like and subscribe. What's up, everybody? This is the Puppet Master Chilling with El Triste. Follow and subscribe to Rodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rashidi Harper, director, executive producer from Hip Hop Uncovered. And I'm here at the Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Stay tuned. Coming at you live through the harbor area, you got MC Poncho, the number one sign tool. And you are checking out Rhodium Radio with my man, Tony A. the Wizard. Check it out. What's up? This is Ronan Gray. You're watching Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday and Sunday. What if this is Mr. D over at Rodium Radio with my homeboy Tony A. The Wizard? Make sure you subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, y'all? This Uncle Skills, man, from Split TV. Y'all be tuning in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rodium Radio with my homie Tony A. The Wizard. This is Rodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Motherfucking legend, make sure you fucking like, subscribe, share if you want to Yo, it's your boy Troublesome Man, TM Game Live in full effect here at Rodeo and Radio with my boy Tony A. The Wizard. You know what it is. Wow. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Ernie G in the place to be. I'm chilling here at Rodium Radio with my homeboy Tony A. The motherfucking wizard. Watch those locals forever. Yo, what's up, man? It's your boy Young Hype here at Rodin Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, San Anthony Campos, a.k.a. Big Citric, inviting everybody to tune in and subscribe to Tony Vision, Rodeo Radio, with your host, Tony the Wizard. What's happening? This is your boy Bobby Castro, and I'm here at Rodeo Radio with the homie Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to like, subscribe, check out the shit. What's good, y'all? Eric Bobo from the mighty Cypress Hill, chilling right here on Rodeo Radio with the homeboy Tony A. the Wizard. That's right. Hey everybody, this is Cliff Ritchie, and I'm here on Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. What's cracking? It's y'all and Crazy Boy Blue Ride Music. You tune in to Rhodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in every Wednesday and Sunday right here. What's up, everybody? This is Dali C, the Trap Queen, and you guys are listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Stay shoot, you guys tune in. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Bobby B, and you're live with Tony A, the Wizard on Rodium Radio. 1212, coming to you live from the Harbor area. DJ Ralph Fan rocking beats with my man, Tony A, rocking the SB200. Let's go. What's up? This is DJ Yeller coming straight out of Compton Rhodium Radio with my boy Tony A. The Wizard. Check him out. 
Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Miss Gathy from NYC. And I'm Saki with Tony A. The Wizard at Rodin Radio. You already know how to bring the NYC love. Hey, shout out to all of you guys. Hey, what's cracking? It's that guilty one. You're tuned in to Rodin Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Live every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe. Ah. What's going on is Hazard. You are tuned in with Tony A. The Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Yo, yo, this is your boy Invincible, and you are watching the Rhodium Radio Show with Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you're tuned in and watching. Ooh, wow. Uh. What's up, guys? This is Isabella Soul, and you're tuning in with Tony A. The Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace. What's up, guys? It's your J Rocks. I'm here on Rhodium Radio with your host, Tony A. The Wizard. I'll make sure to tune in on Sundays and Wednesdays, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Yo, what's up? This is Jose Homicide. You hanging out at Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Like and subscribe. What up, it's your boy King Cash right here at Rodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe. Yo, what up, it's your boy Trouble P here at Rodium Radio with your boy Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in. West Coast. Yo, 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 what it do? This your boy, Big Havoc. One hood, Admiral, South Central Cartel, General. And you're tuned in to Rodium Radio with my boy, Tony A. The Wizard. Locked in. Hello everybody, this is Rocky Padilla, and you listen to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Hey, what's up, what's up my people, hey, Trouble Kid right here, you know, in the house. Shout out to Tony A, the wizard, and shout out Rhodium Radio, much love, thank you for having me. What up, world? It's YQ, Young Quicks, and right now you're listening to the OG, Tony A. The Wizard, on Rodium Radio. Make sure to keep it locked, subscribe, comment, hate, it don't matter, man, we're getting to it. Little 5 stand up. Hey, what up, Shabon Marcuse? You're now tuned in to Rodium Radio, the Tony A. The Wizard, the legend. Tap in. What's happening, everybody? It's your boy, Queenie. You're tuning into Rhodium Radio. Check my man, Tony A. The Wizard, every Wednesday and Sunday. Stay tuned. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know what it is. What's up, Devin? It's your boy, Johnny Boy, a.k.a. Mr. Las Vegas. At Rhodium Radio with your boy, Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, catch us every Wednesday and Sunday. Gia. Hey, y'all. This is Elia Cadena here at Rhodium Radio. With motherfucking Tony A, the wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, and share. Can I get a moment of your time? Hey, it's your boy Lucky Sean Zhu from Hood Stars Podcast. Hey, fuck with one of the best podcasts in the game. Tony A, the wizard, Rodium Radio. Don't motherfucking play with it. Don't sleep on it. Hey, AJ, stand the fuck up. Yes, sir. What's up? This is Clever from the Brown Side. Make sure you guys tune in to Rolling Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. And now you're a bitch. What's cracking? It's your boy, Young Thrive, right here with the homie Tony A. The Wizard on Rolling Radio. Don't forget to subscribe, man. Check out the best interviews on the West Coast. Yeah. I'm on the rodeo, radio. <laughs> what up? It's Odie from Lot of Shade Brown. You know your daddy's favorite rapper, your mama's favorite DJ. <laughs> Plus that YouTube star. You know what I mean? RBG fam. Lot of Shade all day with the homie, Tony A. Right here, Rodeo Radio, Sundays and Wednesdays. Let's go. What's up, y'all? This is Alex Coronado. I'm here on Rodeo. 
Caribbean Radio, and you can tune in on Sundays and Wednesdays with Tony A, the most fucking What's up, y'all? This is your boy Raz Kaz, and you're tuned into Rhodium Radio with my big homie, Tony A, the Wizard. What's up? This is Shrewd with Tony A, the Wizard at Rhodium Radio. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel live Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. Tune in. Circumstances beyond anyone's control. Dr. Dre is in a motherfucking house. So right about now, and I say, Yo, Steve, are you with me? I C E, are you with me? Here's a little something about a nigga like me. They never should have let me buy tape from Steve. Ice Cube would like to play in dope shit mix by Dr. Dre. Since I was a youth. I like concert, now I like the motherfucking rodeo Buying a tape or two, that's what the hell I do You don't like Tony A, well fuck you, this is a game And I'm in it, Ice Cube will fuck you up in a minute With a right, left, right, making you sick And then you see Tony A is on the mix Tony A! Welcome back, everyone, to Rhodium Radio, episode 288. I need 12 more to reach 300. 300. Man, I didn't think I was going to be here this long, but you know what? I appreciate everybody who's tuned in. Everybody who liked, comment, subscribed, everybody who's on the live chat, all the IE fools, all the LA fools, all you fools total that are on there just getting your clown on. Thank you for tuning in because if it wasn't for you guys, my ass wouldn't be here. Okay, so once again, I thank all you guys that are on the live chat and those of you that are not on the live chat. Okay, really quick, some minor announcement just before I introduce my very special guest of the night. Um, if you guys didn't catch me yesterday on Dr. Greenton's podcast, make sure you guys go check that out. Uh, we had a great, great time. I think I caught a contact high, honestly. I don't smoke, but you know what? Being around everybody who does smoke, my eyes were red and I got the munchies. I almost felt like uh, Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. So, um, yeah, I needed a Scooby snack right after. So I want to thank all you guys. So go over there to Dr. Green Tons podcast on Be Real TV and check that out. Other than that, if you guys haven't caught, uh, haven't caught News of Norby's, go check that out. If you guys haven't caught the last Freaky Tales podcast, go ahead and check that out. Um, there's just so much stuff on this platform that if you guys haven't caught, go check that out. Okay. Other than that, if you want to appear on Rhodium Radio, please submit your music to rhodiumradio at gmail.com. Rodium radio at gmail.com that should appear on the screen submit your music along with links to videos and a short bio those of you that submit a short bio i will put at the top of the list okay so that's kind of like how you will get called first so other than that man you know what um my guest i honestly needs no introduction i actually feel kind of weird uh interviewing him and i'll tell you why because i've been knowing this brother for so long i feel like i'll be interviewing my brother so that's how it is. It's all love. It's all family. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce the one and only KK from Second to None, my brother. What's going on with it? How you doing, my brother? Thank you. Good, thank you. Blessed. Blessed to be here. Yeah. First and foremost, thanks that you're here. I know you ca caught a lot of traffic. LA traffic is just a bitch. Yeah. Everybody know that <laughs> transition since they built that 105, cutting off that Linwood to Inglewood transition. Yes. Yes. Sir. But, you know. Uh, made it here That was the whole purpose To make it Absolutely Now I'm looking at your gear man I like that Is that something available For our fans can buy Oh definitely They can buy it You can go uh, What Secondandnine.com 
and second order enough. order it up and get one made, and you too can be second to none. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, we're gonna have a good ass time, man. Oh yeah. But uh, now, other than that, you know what? Just really quick, I wanted to ask you, how were the holidays, man? Did you spend it with family? You know, let's go back to Christmas, New Year's. I know you do a lot of shows. Did you guys have anything going on in Christmas, either at home or on the road? Well. After a certain while, every day I learned in my early 20s that every day after I wake up, that's my holiday. Yeah, it's a blessing. So I really stopped celebrating the other official calendar holidays yeah. and appreciate after waking up and <sighs> that breath of life. Yeah. That's my holiday right there. And that's I see dope. my kids and grandkids, even via a social media platform or in life. Yeah. That's the blessing right there. That's all. So uh, how many grandkids do you have? Three and one, the fourth on the way. Same thing with me. I have three and uh, the fourth on the way. Blessings to all the granddaddies. Blessings to all the granddaddies. You know, now, New Year's, did you guys have any performances going on in New Year's? Uh, man, Possibly I'm, I'm, leading up to it? Uh, I couldn't remember after the block, the other podcast, <laughs> ODM. I can't remember anything. Nah, but... uh. No, nah, it wasn't really nothing special New Year's Eve uh, okay. or New Year's Day. Just another waking yeah. and being blessed for that. But uh, it's a party in the living room every day. Every day. Every <laughs> After damn working day. school hours. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, Kay, let's go back to the very beginning, man. You know what? A lot of people are probably wondering, you know, because it's, it's weird how I talk like heavy about second to none. I talk about Crawford. When I, for the fans, when I say Crawford, I'm referring to high C. I call him Crop and never call him High C, but I guess for the podcast sake, I'll say High C. I've been knowing High C, you, uh, uh, D, much love to D, Quick, AMG, since you guys were teenagers, you know, yeah. because I remember performing with, with Crawford High C at Centennial with, in his 12th grade year, you know, when he performed in the gym. Right. And I was there DJing for him. So I've been knowing you guys for a long time, and for some reason, every time... I mentioned you guys, people for some reason doubt me that I actually ever knew you guys. <laughs> and like, I don't know why, like, but, but I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Uh, um, when we filmed our first video, uh, I'm not your puppet at the Rhodium, uh, you, D, um, Quick, AMG, everybody, Greedy Greg, everybody was there. I'm just trying to remember the first time that we actually met, you know, but I know it had to be in the 80s. Yeah, it was you know. definitely the eighties. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it was at the swap meet because we we right. frequented there. You know, yeah. Me and D was heading out looking for records. I think uh, with Croft mentioned it, we did go up there on that specific reason. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what happened, but you know, roaming around meeting Steve. Maybe that was at that moment. Yeah, I think I don't so too. Think Steve, it was a couple of a few times, but I don't know if Steve wasn't there. Maybe you was there. Yeah, I can't yeah. pinpoint it, but it was it was uh, during those years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, now now I wanted to bring something up because I know we did a mixtape. Uh, it was bullshit mixtape. That was when uh, um, you and D rapped to the Humpty Dance on the mixtape. Man, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> quick, quick rap to the beat uh, more than a player, mm -hmm. and AMG I guess rapped to one of his beats or something that might have quick might have made. I'm not sure, but AMG rapped off of there, um, and then. On that mixtape, we dropped that song, Real Dope. Right. Okay. And that was the song that actually started a lot of the controversy with Quick and, if I'm correct, with MC8. Well, uh, on the top of the tree for CM Devs, you see, yeah, 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 it's me. Right. Well, I guess that, that would have, if, in the sense of some people's perspective. Yeah. But I'm not really sure. To me, uh... I guess that would be the first thing on on, on tape. Well, I won't say wax, but on right. cassette. During them them um, years, you know, right, ninety, eighty nine, ninety, you uh, right, mix. Uh, oh, I can't say mixtapes because you was doing the mixtapes. Right, we was doing underground tapes. Underground tape. There's a difference. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Difference the West Coast, uh, you know, no no disrespect to mixtapes, but you was doing the mixtapes. Right, right. You know, to, we were doing underground tapes, underground rapping, and, right. and so to speak, the whole nine. You know, I I, I want to compare, maybe that's the wrong word, but I do want to say something, okay? When Cube and Easy and Jure would come over to my house, 
and would rap on my mixtapes or whenever I would go to Sir Jinx's house in, in uh, South Central, yeah. Cube would go over there or Dre would go over there and, or Steve used to go over there when, when Dre was doing the mixtapes for him. Um, people would always ask me, you know, how was it working with those guys? When, when I say those guys, the Cube and, 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 you know, Jinx and Dre and them. Well, I wouldn't consider it working because we were just doing mixtapes, okay? Right, right. For some people, I guess that would be considered working. But my thing was this, that uh, I didn't know who NWA was going to become, you know, uh, uh, because they had just dropped Boys in the Hood. Now, we all knew that that was a banger, you know? Right, right. But I didn't know what Q was going to become. I didn't know that Dre was going to become a billionaire. Now, moving on to what I would call, and I say this respectfully, another NWA, which would be Crawford, Second to None, Quick, AMG. That, that's Cor what, correct. Okay. Coming out of the West. Right. Not a group. Right. The individuality, but it was five guys, including you, would be six as a DJ. Yes. Uh, a, our crew, but not our crew. Right. It's called us. Us, yes. <laughs> so one thing that I would always say about them, when I say them, the NWA guys, was like they were always – professional about their craft. Like I never saw cube or Dre or easy to fuck around. They were always like, okay, we're here to do the mixtape. Let's do it. It was always the same thing with you guys. When, if people ask me, how was it with quick? Uh, one thing I could say about quick, he was always working. Okay. Still, and still does with you guys, man. It was like D and K were, if you will, music with legs. <laughs> hey, that, man, thank you. You, you know, and, and it's, it's, Croft, it was always, Croft always had the little, I'm about to bust a nut on your little baby's head lines. You know? <laughs> yes, sir. You know, he hey, always had that. Man. And AMG was, you know, yeah, you know, that type of shit, you know? Yeah. But it was like, I was just blessed, bro, to be amongst the NWA crew and your, and, you know, yeah, our you crew. You got to see the, the, the what would have been the, Two West Coast groups. Yes. In the beginning, the seeding of what would be called the West Coast. Right, right. The, the, uh, not the, the originators, but I guess the second phase. Yes. Because yes. we had people that, Dre was in group before W. Yes. So the second phase when it really kicked, the late 80s going into 90 and 91. Right. And that's where it stopped for me. Yeah. Mid to late 80s. You know, the, the Rodney O's, the King T's, yes. the Joe Cooley's. The Mixed Master Spades, Spade, the Tati T's. All that, Mixed Master Kings. But those who actually made it, you know, Spice One, it was MC Hammer, Too Short. Yeah. 40 and the Click was cracking, you know. Uh, Sir Mix a lot up in Seattle, Washington, West Coast. Yeah. You know, and uh, DJs. Yeah. Mixed Masters. Thanks to Greg, Mag, and K-Day, 1580 AM back then. 1580 you know, AM. And all the... Uh, DJs, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's bring all a, of it. Let's yeah. bring it back for the people that are tuning in right now and possibly don't know who KK is. Where originally are you from? Like, where did you grow up at? Okay. Compton, California. Uh, off of Rosecrans all my life. Uh, in between, you could say, the 17 and Central. <laughs> so, no. uh, Linwood, uh, the, uh, here and there, but... Compton. Right. Now, I know you went to Centennial. What, yeah. what elementary and uh, junior high, because back then it was junior high, it wasn't middle school. Right, right. What so, elementary did you attend and middle school did you attend? Okay. Compton. Well, I started since, you know, for those who don't know, it was uh, Martin Luther King, the borderline of Compton and Watts as a hospital, uh -huh. the borderline of Compton and Linwood, the St. Francis Hospital, and Dominguez Hospital is what they call Rancho Dominguez over there, ball for of Artesia used to be Hospital Dominguez Hills, uh, Rancho Dominguez Hospital. Yeah. They tore it down in this industrial area. But those three hospitals, if you're from Compton, you were born at Martin Luther King, St. Francis, or Dominguez before yeah. the 90s. And, you know, St. Francis and Martin Luther King still there. But I was born in Linwood at St. Francis. Okay. But I was living in Compton, so I was born even born and raised. Yeah, yeah. And I left the hospital, I went to Compton, so I was still born right there off Rosecrans Van Ness on the east side of Compton. Okay. So, you know, most of my life until mid, uh, okay, let's start elementary. So elementary. from the east side, male elementary. For those at Compton, they know where that's at. 
off Rosecrans, Van Ness, and Mail. Mm-hmm. Near going east, if you're going eastbound down Rosecrans, head toward Lutus Park, mm-hmm. it's on the same side of Lutus Park on this before you get there. Mail Elementary. So, first elementary. Then move to further east over there across the Atlantic and uh, Alondra near the Kelly Park area. So, I had to go to Kelly Elementary from second grade to like third. Okay. See, I can date it back. I know the time. <laughs> then after third grade, that's when we moved from the third to fourth grade. Miles moved to the west side of Compton. So I had to go to Lincoln Elementary for a few months until I wound up fifth grade at George Washington Elementary. Okay. Now, this is where I started meeting most of the west side okay. of Compton. Or, uh, you know, third, fourth grade on up. Yeah. All the way till 12th grade, graduating at Centennial in 89. But uh, pretty much most of my Compton history, uh, still here, same streets, ride by. This, this, I went to this elementary, that elementary, this uh, both sides. Oh, dope. Yeah, so that's where the history uh, and the blessing to be able to still be here. Yeah. And around these streets of people, I went to school with you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the love and appreciation. I went to school with you, too. Right, you right. famous too now. Right, let's go in there and get this water. <laughs> right, exactly. Now, what about uh, 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 junior high school? Davis Junior High School. After you know, moving okay. on the west side of Compton to Spruce Street. Wow. Uh, Davis Junior High, nineteen eighty three through eighty six. It's my years when a junior high wasn't no middle school. It's a middle school, but they were called junior high. Just stick to the script. Right, stick yeah, to the script. Stick to the script. Junior high. And it went from seventh grade, eighth grade to the ninth grade. Yeah. So during that year, uh, my Compton story in schools, junior high, Davis Junior High. That was, yeah. man, that was a good little box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now you went to Centennial, because if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, there's three high schools. There's Dominguez, Centennial, and Compton High, correct? Right. Okay. Now, I have to ask you this. Why didn't you go to Compton High? Well, I did go there to check okay. out. To check out. Yeah. You know, I had to turn my jacket because I had a little red on the inside out because my mama was with me. Okay. So, you know, back then in the 80s, you know, it was grown men waiting on to see who going to check out of the crib school. Right. Go to the blood of power root school so they could try <laughs> to get a, get a free, get one in on you, let you know. Yeah, don't come back. Don't come back. Yeah. You know, for me, going to the red schools and growing up in the red territories, uh, yeah, but experiencing both sides. But Compton High, going up in the urban area, Compton, Watts, L.A., Inglewood, Gardena, you know, Wilmington, all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, when you coming out of junior high, what school you not going? Uh, what school, what you're school not you not going you, to? What school you supposed to go to if you're in that life, and what school you not supposed to go to? Very true. Very true. Cause, that, yeah. Because I know in the '80s here, it was East Side Wilmas, West Side. And then there was Eastside Pain, uh, uh, the Bloods uh, from Ghost Town, yeah. and then there was uh, 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 Water from Piru over here from the West Side, uh, and it, it was predominantly you know Rasa, it was Black, it was uh, Filipino Samoans, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Bloods went to Banning, the Crips went to Carson because there was all blue over there. Here was the red. So and a lot of people because look at my favorite color is blue, okay. But I wear a lot of red. I get the most compliments when I wear red. But people always say, why always wear, wear that red, homie? Are you trying to be a Norteño? A lot of people don't realize that my school colors are black and red. So yeah. I like, like, like. Centennial. See? Red. Black Burgundy. and red. Homie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's what I like to sport. And if you don't like it, I don't give a fuck. But I like black and red, homie. So Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's not having nothing to do with the game, but it's, right. it's a royal color. It stands out. Exactly. You know, it, 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 it stands out. We can't, can't deny that. Yeah. Now, <laughs> growing up, did you play any sports at all? Uh, junior high, I tried out for track and basketball. I didn't make it, but I, I was better than some of them. I, I was second to none. <laughs> they did, exactly. High school, when I made it, I made it to the sophomore basketball team at uh, Centennial. Okay. And guess who was the star of the sophomore, sophomore Centennial basketball team? He was also alumni of Centennial High. I'll take two guesses, or you give me one. Okay. See, the quick or Croft? Neither one of them. None of them? DJ Aladdin. 
No shit. He was the star. Latin can ball. Y'all give Fonzo. That's my home with DJ Latin. We used to be bagging on each other in class. No shit. Scratching on the uh our desk. Bro, let me tell you something about you know that what guy. I'm saying? 80, 86 through 89, Satanic so High. And he not no blood of Paru. Yeah. Yeah, but I, the real one stayed. So much love to DJ Aladdin. That's the homie. Wow, wow. You know what? I'll tell you, when I first saw Aladdin, I believe it was March 24th, because I, I still have my ticket. March 24th, 1988. Remember the Celebrity Theater in Anaheim mm-hmm. where, where, where the fucking stage turns? Yeah, that, man, they got one in Arizona, same yes. thing, Celebrity Theater. Bro, I got uh, when with Steve Yano, only because of him. And I always give him his flowers, even though he's no longer here with them, but I want to say rest in peace because it's because of him that I met everyone, okay? And right, I always right. make that known. He took me backstage, you know, that's where I first met Jerry Heller. Uh, I met the DOC back there. The DOC opened up. Um, Everlast, remember Everlast? Yeah, yeah. Never missing a beat. Yeah, yeah when okay. he first came out. Yeah. yeah, when he had the pompadour. Yeah, yeah, the swig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> so he performed. King T went up there on stage. Pooh was on the drum. Aladdin was on the tur- was on the turntables, and King T had Mixmaster Spade on there. So yeah. I got to see Spade live, bro. Celebrity theater. Celebrity theater. Man, I don't, no, that's another show at Celebrity Theater. It, uh, no, 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 my bad. It was Monopolies in Riverside. Okay, nineteen ninety okay. or eighty nine. Okay, I didn't think I, I don't think I went to that one. Uh, Spade, Toddy T, Too Short, Spice One. It no either, shit. It was either eighty nine or ninety. I had probably had to be ninety. Probably. So I'm thinking, yeah, eighty nine. Wow. Yeah, bro, man. There's a lot of people. Look, if you guys have never. Every day of your homework, I do want to say this. Do your homework on Mixed Master Spade. You know, because... It, it definitely. Now, 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 let me ask you this, Kay, because one thing about your guys' style that made you guys so unique, you guys came with a style that I had never heard of, that I possibly, and I just say possibly, could have compared it to Mixed Master Spade, because Mixed Master definitely. Spade... Definitely. You know, Mixed Master Spade had that singing style. Right. You know... that's Being from Compton... And that's why I can't understand some of these artists that claim Compton. How you how you miss talking about Rodney O. Joe Cooley, Mix Master Spade and Toddy T, yeah. King T, DJ. I mean, we know in the beginnings. You you can't they came before us. Yeah. Out of respect and paying homage, just like some of these, like you said, you need to research our history, our story, right. not his story. Right. Our story. Absolutely. Not history. Our story. <laughs> Right. Yeah, <laughs> stick to our three. <laughs> okay, I said this before, and I got in trouble for it by a lot of the fans, but I'm going to go ahead and say it again because, and I want somebody to prove me wrong. Somebody wanted to come in and debate with me, but I'll give them that. I, if you ever want to debate, you know who you are, I'll bring you in. I always said this, that the best DJs on the West Coast, the best poppers, the best rappers, best producers, in my opinion, came from Compton. Well, thank you, brother. Um, I agree with you. I call Compton a little Egypt. But uh, <laughs> for the West Coast, it's the Bay and Compton. Okay. Everything else come around the Bay and Compton yeah. for the total West Coast. Sir mix a lot got Seattle, Washington, but the pr- primarily Compton is a, is a good base for a lot of entertainment to come out of that city. You, you know, it's okay... Here's the crazy part. I got some homies from New York. When they came out here in the 90s, here's where they wanted to visit. They didn't tell me, and I say this re- out of respect for Mr. Kelvin Anderson from VIP Records. Yeah, yeah. I've been knowing him since 87. But when my homies come down from New York, you know where they always wanted to go? Compton Swamp Meet. Compton Swamp Meet. That's where they wanted to go. And I was like, you know, now keep in mind, I grew up here, me and my homies in the 80s, we used to go all 40 down. They used to go fucking smoking bud, and we used to go to Compton, you know, and buy our shit, you know. That, that was like our ghetto mall. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, exactly. You know, that's where we used to go. And remember the Korean dudes used to own everything, but they had the Mexican girls running the... Yeah, you know? <laughs> keep, the, keep, keep the crowd cracking. Exactly. Get the draw. <laughs> so my boy came down, bought a Compton hat. He just wanted one, you know, bought some draws, and he bought some fake Jordans, and I told him, you know, those are fake. And he said, that's why I'm buying them. 
It's the, the element and the essence of getting them from Compton yes. in Compton. Yes. And, it, it, you know, just that. Yes, yes. And appreciating the love for that. Yes. I wish they would have did that coming from New York on the radio and in MTV more. Thank you. Now, let, let's talk a little bit about that because one thing that this generation does not know is that in the 80s there and early 90s, there was an East Coast and West Coast bias, and I'm going to say us. Man. They just didn't like us. And it, it's evident. It's, it's, it's what people don't like to do today, go back and do their homework or research, because the facts is right there in your face. It's called MTV, uh, BET, and uh, yes. the bias is clear. It's clear. Uh, if I could add, yeah, being one half a second to none, one of the first West Coast groups signed to an East Coast-based label. 1990, so I think we caught it, not in WA. DJ Quick, first solo West Coast artist signed to an East Coast-based label, which was Profile Records. Ron DMC, Rob Bass, Sweet T, Jazzy Joyce, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Who came before us at Profile Records. So during the late 89, 90, you know, and the bidding war started on us. Yeah. Yeah, from the East Coast labels because they nobody – Believed in the West Coast until Easy and then WA made that uh, that platinum mark. Yeah, yeah. Then everybody was looking for Compton. Then everybody was all the labels, the East Coast, and that's how we got signed. But just bringing that up, no respect. We because we were in New York, most of NWA and the, a lot of other groups that uh, Nate Capital Records are pri- priority West Coast based labels. Yeah. With the offices out here. Our offices were in New York, yeah. London. Then they had a base in Hollywood. So but the yeah. New York. We had to be in New York. Yeah. So, you know, we got we caught all of that bias in nineteen ninety. So and uh still have footage from then in the interviews to show the bias. Yeah. Yeah. So I I, I can't wait. <laughs> have me some fun. You know, <laughs> I, I know you're familiar with Soren Baker. Okay. Definitely. Okay, Soren Baker, um, for my 100th episode, I had him be the host, and I had him interview me and Crawford, me and High C. Okay? Right, right. And uh, he was talking about how when Dre dropped the Chronic, the first one, 1992, if I'm correct, and then Puffy had his Bad Boy label, and then he had Death Row out here. He was working for the Source magazine, which is pretty much the Bible book of hip-hop. Okay. Of, of hip hop. Of hip hop. Not yeah. rap. Though. Right. Okay. Yeah. So what happened was he was working there and he said that the source always made it look like Bad Boy and Death Row were always neck to neck with record sales. And he said it was like this with the uh, Death Row up here. Yeah. Okay. So he said that they, he was always asking, we should put these guys on, like talking about West Coast West artists. Coast, yeah. And they could say, no, no, let's huh. put these guys. So he finally asked the guy, I guess the guy who runs or gives the okay, what, whoever gets the front cover. He said, okay, I have to ask you a question. Is this a hip hop magazine or a East Coast magazine? Whoa. Which was a great question. Ooh, he couldn't. He, oh, go ahead. My bad. Yeah. Go ahead. So they said, well, this is my magazine. It's hip hop, but I say what goes. So from there, he ended up eventually leaving and working for LA Times out here and Ended up covering rap out here, obviously. So covering rap, yeah. But he he did answer it in a sense by saying it's a hip hop magazine, and yes. this is kind of leading from me speaking and doing uh, interviews. Uh huh. It's it's no disrespect to hip hop. Mm-hmm. We and like I say we I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for the we in West. Uh, hip hop don't have nothing to do with no other state, but New York. Now. The hip hop influence carried across the world, mm-hmm. but what is and where is hip hop from? It's five boroughs in New York, right? Am I wrong? Anybody remember? Right, because they can you can go back. We didn't have Google and a social media platform. No, we didn't have a none digital of that. platform. We had to actually look up stuff, read the newspaper, or something like that. Or or go to the library, call <laughs> the library. But you have so much information at your hand, you can find these facts out. Right. You know, it's very vital. So people need to actually really research and answer a lot of your questions 
that you you, you know be, bewildered and get, I don't know I don't know you you can know yeah it's too easy to know right that's what right. got lazy brained it out is that's why hell wrong with y'all yeah. anyway wake up uh, <laughs> wake up remember that tiki tock tiki tock <laughs> get up now, now let me ask you this growing up man. I grew up to a lot of the East Coast, obviously, like we all did, whether it was Fat Boys, whether it was Salt and Pepper, whether it was Run DMC, Grandmaster Flash, and the Furious Fire, Curtis Blow. Curtis Blow was my favorite rapper of all time growing up as a kid. Grandmaster Flash being a, a big influence on my DJ career. Then later on, yeah. Kelvin Anderson, uh, a brother, a guy named King Tim, and then eventually ended up meeting Joe Cooley, who pretty much became my mentor, somebody from, from Compton. Now, growing up, K. Who did you grow up listening to as far as rap is concerned? Mix, Master Spade, Toddy T, Joe Cooley, Rodney O, King T. Uh, listen to Too Short, you know. Okay. F- considering rap. Right. Listen to everything that was rap. Yeah. Now, just like you was just saying, like Melly Mel. And yeah. Like Houdini. Right. Uh, Curtis Blow. Yeah. Okay, let's just take those... East Coast, Northeast, New York. Yeah. Rappers, right? Right. Run DMC even. Yeah. They talked about life and street stories. Yes. Okay, now, go all those names I just mentioned, show me what we considered, or not we, but what's considered hip-hop tracks. You can't find one hip-hop track on Curtis Blow. What about LL? Listen to, listen to it. Right. Where are the hip-hop beats on that? That's KRS One and them, MC Shine and them, and all of that. Right. Marley Mall, Queens, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. Right. Right. Where did hip hop start? They tell you in the in the records. Hip hop started. What what what? MC Shine and all them. Right. Okay. Now just recently, uh, what was it? Grandmaster Cash, two thousand twenty two. Right. How did they even come up with the word? We didn't. We didn't even call it hip hop. This is New York and hip hop right. in itself. Yeah, you're right. Twenty twenty two. Look at look at that once again. Easy, lazy minded people is on YouTube or Google it. Uh, New York and its cadence of hip hop became a term because one of the homies out of the Grandmaster Flash Melly Mel in it, right? Yeah, was getting ready to go. This is out of uh, I think Melly Mel or who's still alive that, that knows that. Yeah. They just spoke on that at 22. I watched it on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah. he said, we didn't even call it hip hop. We just came up with that little cadence because he was getting ready to go to the military. And like, you're you going to go down and be able to hip, uh, hip, uh, hip, uh, hip, right, left, right, hip, hop, uh, hip, hop. Uh. So that's how they came up with that and using that cadence. I learned that in 2022. But I learned in 1990. Yeah. When it was told to me while being in New York. Being signed to Profile Records, you know, in, in New York. Yeah. What hip-hop was. Because they was drilling second to none. Uh, members of Steps of Sonic. Bobby is the drummer. 1990. Drilling us about, why why y'all singing hooks over hip-hop and killing each other over colors? I was like, that's, that's not, not what it's really about, bro. Yeah. I'm like, uh, y'all got a different perspective of, of, of the West Coast. That's, that's not right. That was one of the things that when we... Went to Texas in Houston at the Palladium where we performed. Yeah, uh, uh, where I first met DJ Scratch from uh, uh, EPMD at the time. Ah oh, man, yeah. When dudes cool, was like, bro. "Hey man, is it true that y'all be killing each other over colors?" You know, man. and I'm like, "Who in the hell told you that?" Like, their, but- their perception without even and they thank them and EPMD for that tour and Scratch and all the brothers. Yeah. But thank them for at least asking instead of driving off a of perception they have and then. Making it public, yeah. Back back in ninety and ninety one, yeah. Just off the belief and not even asking the West Coast or trying to uh, research and, and find out what's going on. Right, right. So thirty some years ago, why y'all gang banging and killing each other over colors? Well, in the beginning of time, it was two different tribes. Stop it, or maybe four or five tribes, because we can name. They call them colors, right? Right. Black, white, brown, yellow, red. Shut the fuck up. It's tribal and everything. It's two sides to every story. The truth stood in the middle. Yeah. When you gonna tell on yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody stop lying and bullshit with yourself. Well, but, they have the KKK, right? They have the color. 
But the KK come first. <laughs> and he black. <laughs> but yeah. I ain't black. Right. Look, what color is this? Look at that. Yeah, you're right. Show me one black person on this planet. Besides my homeboy, uh, when you gave on the Lakers, my nigga, boy, he be getting it in, though. When you gone, boy, he be getting it. That nigga, that's my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga be playing defense, too, boy. So, 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 okay. Growing up, you mentioned Mixed Mount Spade, Toddy T, you know, you mentioned all the greats. Uh, um, did you grow up at all? Which I'm, sh- I'm pretty sure you did it with uh, East Coast rap as well. I mentioned them. Yeah. Curtis Blow, Houdini, Ron DMC, uh, Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five, Melly Mel, and because, like, I was going back on it, yeah. none of those songs sound like the hip hop right. that KR Antra, Boom, Bap, original rap, that hip hop sound. Yeah. Those East Coast groups have. N- not that embodiment of that hip hop boom bap sound in their music. Curtis Blow, Houdini, Run DMC, even right. LL. Some of the beginners. Are, uh, what, what about Melly Melon? They came way back. Broken glass everywhere. People, People pissing up. Don't sound like boom bap original rap. Don't sound like that. <laughs> Curtis Blow had live instrumentation in his music. Sound like some second and none. We listen to that too, right? right? Sound like some quick, but sound like good music first. Right now, that's where this whole game, East Coast, West Coast, or whatever coast. Right. Cheese toast coast. It don't matter. It's just it's, 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 uh, all that. Put some butter on the bread first. Uh, it's just good music. Now, yeah. what region it come from in the United States is going to be center, mid United States, southwest, northwest, southeast, or northeast. Whatever state you in, you're going to represent your turf or your hood or your state line or city or that street. Right, right. Let's get your shit straight. Somebody across the street don't like you. Now, there's division somewhere. Right. How did it start? Who started it? Fuck all that. Keep living and enjoy life. And good music is what got us all here. It's called oldies. Now, some of these younger generations can't even tell you nothing about Luther Vandross. No, Or not. Uh, anybody in Latin, hip, Hispanic, black, soul, R&B, jazz, they can't even talk about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a, it's a loss in the sauce in the brain, man. And, uh, you know, two generations are lost, where as we came up in the 80s and 90s, we pay homage to the R&B or the older Mexican band members or the tuba players. You can remember him playing the accordion right. when you were a child to still remember him today 20, 30 years later, like we do right. Motown. Absolutely. What is for the Latinos, the Hispanics, the younger generation can't tell you about those old cats. Right. No, you have no right. history and knowledge of, of their West Coast, too. Yeah. So uh, pay attention to history. It ain't just your rap history. It's music and good music. So going back to that, listen to East Coast and West Coast at the same time. The only difference is the East Coast thought that they were prominent. And there's no disrespect or hate to the East Coast or hip-hop in that nature, but they were so self-centered at the time because they had a more of a platform than the West Coast did. With yeah. Wall Street being right down the street, Manhattan down on Broadway, yeah. and all of those investors out here, we had self investors called hustlers. Yeah. yeah, and the story tells it's called a too short E forty. If Easy was alive, rest in peace. Uh, these hustlers, quick, second to none. Tony A, I C, Steve Yano. Yeah, hustlers. Now some of these other folks had help because they had a machine behind them on this West Coast. Yeah. Everybody on the East Coast had help. Right. But we still here. The hustlers. Yeah. The two short. The 40 and the click. The DJ quick. The second nuns. The right. Tony A. The high C's. We was hustlers. Yeah. And we made it. We didn't have no help from the beginning. No. You're right. Some of these cats on the West Coast in position, they had help. Yeah. We didn't. The us. Us didn't have no help. <laughs> Now, now, earlier we had talked about that a lot of your style was similar to Mixed Master Spade. Now, if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, I know years ago I had asked you this question. I guess, I don't know if we were on the, on the, in a van or so, going somewhere, but I had asked you about that singing style. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, did D and you get a lot of that singing or a lot of that practice singing in church? Is that right or is that wrong? That's part of it. Okay. That, that's 
Definitely correct, and that's part of it. Church starting off, and uh, you know, our grandmother having churches do Compton in L.A. seventies uh-huh. and eighties before she passed in the nineties. Uh, still, some of them are still going. Uh, definitely starting in church in the choir. Uh, D himself had his own solo songs as a child in church. My really? grandmother, yeah, awesome. yeah, D was a star, man. You know. I was the speaker, as I would say. You know, I could talk well. You I had could, the, that, that Lou Ross voice. Right on. Show you right. You know, yeah, I do all the King heroin speeches to keep kids away from heroin. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the late 70s, uh, you know. But, yeah, start from church and, like I say, soul music, R&B, just listening to good music. For me, it was Earth, Wind & Fire that called me. Yeah. You know, so that's why I go from the gold album, that spirit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, with the three white pyramids on the front. I used to crawl to it. So Hell yeah. Okay, now let me ask you this. At what point in time, about how old were you, if you can remember when you decided like you wanted to take this rap thing serious? Like, what was Never it? Never did really. It just happened. It was just a part of loving good music and how music made you feel, like, feel good. Okay. So that's what came up with the term, you know, feel good music. I didn't create it, uh, uh, you know, became the king and queen. Or not. I ain't, definitely ain't no queen, but, you right. know, coined something to put a title right, on something. Right. You know, but feel good music, Al Green. So Brent Wood, anything, all that, war, yeah. all yeah. that stuff, man. Uh, you know, Earth, Wind & Fire, Stevie Wonder, Luther Vandross, Nita Baker, you know, just soul music. Okay. Stuff that touch your heart and your soul, make you learn a lesson about life. Now, a lot of people may not know, but uh, you and D, or Gang Steve for second to not, are cousins, correct? Yeah, first blood cousins. His okay. mom and my mama were sisters. Rest in peace to both of our Rest brothers. in peace. Just to let you guys know that. Now, let's go back to Crawford. Who did you meet first? With Croft, High C, or Quick? Uh, kind of both at the same time, but, you know, the friendship at all kind of at the same time, 1983. Okay. 82, 83. And it, was this in high school or just on Junior the Junior high, right after sixth grade, going into seventh grade, transitioning to Davis Junior High okay. in 83 or into 82, into okay. 82, going into 83. And, and now at one point, did you, D, now were you and D ever solo rappers or were you guys always yeah, together? Yeah, it's always, everybody was doing their own thing. Uh, a okay. lot of people don't know this and we... Like you said earlier, and like in WA, well, the difference with us, if we were a group, we did everything. Mm-hmm. Everybody wrote their own lyrics like we still do. Yeah. We started off as DJs, all of us. Okay. Croft, Second and None, Quick, Tony A. We <laughs> all started off as DJs because yeah. that was us. Yeah. AMG, on the other hand, you know, he was in the mix, but he came. But all of us as a unit originally from out here, we all started off as DJs yeah. from elementary Turntables, mixers, receivers, and speakers from Sears and shit. Or Just from a, or from all Radio the way Shack. back. All the pieces to go along, the extra cartridge for the needles and stuff and all that. Yeah. Yeah. You now, know. so from DJing, it evolved into rapping, or you guys were rapping at around the same time? Croft was the rapper in junior high. He really? was a star rapper. He was the first rapper. The rest of us, you know, it just came because of music. And it's something to do. It's fun other than basketball or me being karate man and the experiment. Uh, MacGyver back then. Uh, experiment with stuff. <laughs> okay. Out of UD, UD, Quake and Croft, I'm sure being from Compton, everybody had a pop at one point. A pop? Pop, pop, popping, you know, popping, pop locking back in the day. Oh, man. When you said popping, I'm like, what the gun up? Which one? Come on, it's West. <laughs> I'm sure all you guys oh, at one man. point had okay. to pop. Who was the best me. out of all you guys? You know I'm going to say me, man, but, you know, <laughs> what's up, cool boy? Me. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Nah, but, uh, yeah, it was me and Deep was a, it was, see, this go back from childhood. The singing out of church to family. Through elementary, singing Heat Wave and Switch. It's me and D. Yeah. And he'd be at home with his mom, mom, and mom, but the same songs. And, you know, just automatically linked like that. Okay. okay. But uh, Pop Lock and, you know, from singing and rapping and being cousins, you know, same age. And, uh, you know, we started popping together. Yeah, okay. You know, age is shit. What the same when, uh, well, D came a year later to junior high. Me and Quick and Croft was already there. Okay. So me and Croft was, you know, breakdancing just really hit, but West Coast was already pop-locking and locking. Yes. 
which the East Coast don't realize. You know, it took them a while to realize that we got our own thing. You know, yeah. but uh, and we been doing this too. Yes, very, very true. I'm yeah. going to tell you who's from Wilmington, and he got in trouble, and he was almost about to get his ass kicked, was uh, Boogaloo Shrimp. Boogaloo Shrimp. Boogaloo Shrimp. You got known from Turbo from Breaking. He was in a, in his own documentary where he said that popping and pop locking started for, in New York. And there was a lot of dudes out here. We're not talking about breaking. Right, right, right. You know, yeah. Popping and popping and locking. Locking out there, lockers. Yeah. And he said, he goes, oh, yeah, it all started from New York. And there was some dudes on his ass that he had to end up apologizing for that shit. Yeah. He said and, that. And, and, and that's what's going to happen in 2023. You see, it already happened. There's going to be a lot of apologies this year. A lot of. Well, some of them started with me on the last uh, interview. But, okay. you know, but apologies to everybody. It's all love. But it's going to be a lot of apologetic people coming up this year. From uh-huh. a lot of twenty and thirty year old stuff, yeah, and it's not like harking on old stuff, but it's like you should just tell the truth in the first place, or absolutely, just be honest and say you was a hater. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Hip hop, or everybody wake up. You love and appreciate or like hip hop, but that's not you. Yeah, that's them, and it's all right to like that, and it's all right to like where you from as well, and appreciate yeah. where you from. Right. Right. Definitely appreciate it. If it's good, appreciate it. Ain't, right. uh, ain't nothing wrong with it. I like that too. It's okay. like a Houdini, uh, <laughs> something like that, around DMC. The whole world love it. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't don't put a, a coinage on shit. Right. We're the kings. Right, right. I, I, I used to gang of them, look what happened to all of them. Yeah. At what point in time, I believe it was in high school, okay, did you, I guess, D, and I'm just, I'm just gonna assume quick. Start putting demos together, as far as like let's wrap off of this, you know. Quick kind of, quick kind of seeded that doing. You know, we was doing it at the same time and didn't know it. Uh-huh. And then uh, you know through school, uh, uh, eighth grade, I think that's when it kicked off. Eighty four, eighty five. Okay, and this was just instrumental records you guys were rapping to and recording. Nah, the old, drum? the old oldies are funk records. What part of the record you like the best? Right. Being DJs at that time in seventh and eighth grade, eighty from eighty two to eighty four, uh, coining in your head this yeah right here. This is what I want to do. Oh, I like this part. So right, and then just go back and part, forth. Yeah, back and forth. Find that little break. Same thing. You know, that's what we was doing as kids. And, okay. And, and I like man that uh, just like uh, let's say cameo. Right. Dun, 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 dun. Right. I can rap. Now don't forget. Now I got to cut you. Yeah. Now I got. Well, that's quick. I was talking about cameo. The original. I know. I know. I know. We. You know. My bad. <laughs> Gotta keep but, the humor flowing. <laughs> no, no. But all good, man. So. Oh shit, man. You, okay, at what point in time do you remember quick getting this drum? Because SB twelve that SB twelve hundred that you guys doing started? the building the penthouse. When we uh, okay. went out to L A, jumped in my black colors, me and D. The uh, colors. Crop jumped in the L. Did you have laces on it? No, nah, I had Vogue's on it with the rallies. I just had the inside of them painted black to match the okay. unfinished black paint I had on the colors that day. But I had them Vogue's on that motherfucker. I remember Crop had <laughs> that. Uh, um, that cutlass, and he had outstanding in the back. And every time he drove up to my, I've never seen it. All I saw was the Elko. The, no, the, I'm sorry, the Elko. With, okay. With, oh with, yeah, with, yeah. With the yeah. outstanding in the back, uh, like he had outstanding. And every time he drove to my house, he was bumping outstanding by the Gap Band. I'm like, bro, I read it on the back, but you always got to play the song with him. It stuck with him hard. It did. Yeah, it was like, oh, man, I must be outstanding. Oh, this shit working <laughs> for me. Shit, outstanding. Yes, bro. He ain't coming up. Here he, here he comes oh, with his juicy man. ass, wet ass cherry curl. That up, yeah, yeah. The Croft, ready for the world, light skin, ready for, ready the, for the world. The world. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about nigga. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I remember when I first met him at the Swamp Meet. Steve uh, tells me, and this is a true story. He goes, "Hey, uh, there's a guy out there. He works in the back. He's from, uh, he's a blood. He's from Compton." Goes to Centennial, mm. give me the whole fucking spill. And he goes like, uh, uh, you know, 
I think he wants to rap on your tapes. And I was like, okay, let me go check him out. So I went over there. Crawford, you know, introduced himself to me all formally. How you doing, sir? And I was yeah. like, what the fuck? Because I was out of high school. He was in high school. So and then I was like, uh, he walked back with me, Steve, and he goes, hey, uh, I'm going to be going to Louisiana. He goes, I'm going to be going for the summer. Uh, you going to need me before then? And I was like, nah, go ahead and go to Louisiana. And then when you get back, we'll go ahead and uh, work on some demos. I had Crawford rapping to some house beats back in the day. I had him rapping to instrumental of Funky Cole Medina. That's what, that was the good thing about him, man. For those who don't know, he was the first rapper out of all of us, the crew, so to speak. He yeah. was he was a star in junior high. Okay. High C. Highly okay. intelligent Croft. I ain't t- you know what? From, except from the seventh grade, 83 on up. So y'all give, give him them props and that, you yeah. know, and we used to go back and forth DJing to the raps. Yeah, yeah. Junior high school. Yes. So quick too. Quick KK and Croft. D was a year later. So he came in, he came a year later. But that's the seed of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and then you know where it went from there. Yeah. So he started rapping off the mixtapes and then eventually we started doing the oldies. But uh I remember uh when he called me and told me, Hey, do you want me to perform in my school? Do you wanna do you wanna come? Because I had two serving Vegas, the turntables, the mixer and everything. I said, Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I went and performed in Centennial High at the gym. I think that was his senior year. Uh, yeah. uh, but we had a good-ass time. It was funny, man, because I told him, I told Croft this. Man, you know what? You know, because he had a song called I'm Hard. And when he rapped it for me, I didn't think it was that hard. You know, and I told him that. And I was like, I, I'm not feeling that. But I'm going to tell you what caught me, okay? When I saw him perform and I saw how he in- interacted with the crowd, the crowd yeah. that's what won me over. And I told Steve, okay, we got something with this guy. That's where the same thing as a friend notices that another friend has talent and it was able to move the crowd in junior high school. Now, Croft was able to do that where I wasn't even rapping. I was rapping, but I wasn't thinking about being a rapper. Yeah. I like music or I'm sitting there, I can hum music or add my own notes to the music. By, yeah. You know, just put my little dib in and there and just add the lyrics later. Yeah, you know, and, and you know what? Okay, I, I want to say this, okay? And I've, those of you guys that are fans of Rodeo Radio have heard me say this multiple times. People have always said this. Who are some of the groups that are most memorable when it comes to um, performances, okay? If you guys want to get a shot, big dog, you guys, come, uh, you guys can handle one of those, okay? Um, help them out, Norbies. Okay, if you guys need a cup, go for it. Um, now... Appreciate it, bro. All good. Uh, uh, when people ask me, who are some of the groups that really motivated you to do what you do by watching them perform? I'm going to say this. The first ones was NWA. I really, really saw them rock the fucking crowd, bro. Okay? To the point where I, I always tell people this. If you saw them and you weren't gangbanging, you'd want to gangbang after you watched the, those motherfuckers perform. Like, they just tore the roof off that motherfucker, okay? Yeah. It's the second group, he wasn't a group. He was a solo artist. It was KRS-One. Man. I saw him Man. perform at the Palace right there up of Hollywood and Vine. Now we, I don't I don't I think it's a fucking probably a gay club. I'm not sure. <laughs> but something like that. Okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. More than likely. So what happened was, uh, um, so... I saw him perform after, I always tell people this, Cypress Hill. I seen Cypress Hill tear that shit off. But I always go back to Second to None, AMG, Crawford, Quick. Those early, early shows, bro, amazing, bro. Amazing. People, I I remember when EPMD was a headliner. We went up on stage, cleaned house. And people started leaving. They didn't even give a they fuck about they EPMD. Didn't want to, the head, they started trying to make us uh, quick and us all in one be the headliners. And a lot of people don't realize because they were from the East Coast. In their mind, fuck it, let those West Coast guys go first. Right. And that's, they fucked up. They fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's going back to, like I say, how East Coast or the hip hop element. Why y'all calling them bitches and hoes? And while we were on the East Coast and had a show, I remember that show specifically. This when Latifah introduced Naughty by Nature. I think we were, they came up from Jersey, had the whole crew looking out, you know, protecting, showing us they had love for us. Yes. And when we did that show, and uh, as soon as we said, all the bitches in the house, <laughs> if you want a nigga to eat you out, let me yeah, say, uh, yeah. The whole crowd, the East Coast crowd was like, all the women, yeah. 
The, the East Coast, uh, uh, the homies, the hip hop homies, is running on their cell phone. Yo, they calling the bitches in the whole sun and they loving it, yo. You know, yeah. oh my God, I can't believe it. So we blew their minds in 91 on, on the EPMT tour. I think the Carolinas no. or Virginias or somewhere it, like that. That chant that you would yeah. have the people go right, back right, and forth. Right, right, right. You know who stole it after that later, right? Everybody, everybody stole, it. and I'm gonna tell it's you, it's a whole lot of people that stole a lot of stuff. Uh, that, and I'm gonna name too one. Too short, E40, name- DJ Quick, and Second and None. They just stole a whole lot of stuff from us. Okay, <laughs> remember, and, and the other part of that one was, if you want to stick your dick in her mouth, let me hear you say, "Ow." Oh. Yeah. Okay. I once heard fucking Cube use that. Ah, that's so many shows. Bro, I was looking around like, do you guys hear that? And nobody knew what the fuck I was talking about. Because, like, it, you know, it's sometimes not, uh, why we not on a lot of these, uh, haven't been on a lot of the West Coast shows with prominent artists. We've been studied for, uh, and I just to go back on a moment, uh, look at 2022 and look at a DJ Quick second and none performance without rapping over our lyrics. It's like I'm clearing this mic. This 33 years for us. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to live performances, I, I'll put quick and second to none, definitely second to none uh, today right. over a lot of these cats when it comes to live because I'm live now. And that's, that's what I know. 33 years in and whoever hear my voice will fuck y'all ass up on stage. Motherfuckers. Straight up. Whack ass say show, stealing ass shit, motherfuckers. Quick and second and none. Y'all can't fuck with us on stage. Don't let us do, don't let Raphael slide out there and then they do, let's get down, let's get uh, some shit like, see, they go back into quick production and being a good producer. I was going to say Elder Bars, but he just got arrested. Yeah, I heard that this morning, man. He got caught. Uh, man, come on, L. Yeah. Love you, bro. Yeah. Man, yeah. He got caught. I heard that on K, uh, man, K Day. <laughs> But it's KBLA today. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, Man. but you know what? I'm glad you said that because today when I go salud, see. Salud, brothers. Salud, salud. Today when I go see performances, if I do, I'll be honest with you. And I, get, I know I'm jumping up ahead, but I'm going to bring it back. How do you feel? Are you into trap music at all? That's Georgia stuff. I like some of what I've heard, trap. Yeah. And then they called it something. Drill music came after yeah. trap. But some of the some of the beats, yeah, you can't you can't deny it if you like good if it's a good feeling. But yeah. some of the tones in some of them beats is a little bit disturbing, right? You know, right. it's a, it's a nuance to the ear. Or, you know, I like good music. Yeah. Some of it, and not discrediting trap or drill music, but some of it just eight oh eight tones kicking. You know, we're in the music. If some of it feel good, some of it's out of. Tone or tune in the sense, and it, it kind right. of throws you off between the eight oh eight and the kick. Right, right. And you know, you don't know whether to dance or. Wait a minute, uh, shit! I forgot. <laughs> Look like he had cerebral palsy right Which, there. Where the know. kick? Where to be that? Uh, you know. No, that's the way I feel, bro. That's the, the way time. There's all, all kind of shit. It's everywhere. Okay, one of the last shows we did, I believe, was 2017. It was in Arizona. It was all of us: Crawford, Sugar Free. AMG, yeah. Okay, and then I I believe uh, we went to Scottsdale, Arizona after to do. I mean, just to go out there. And game was there, and uh, there were. I remember Crawford introduced me to a drink. It was a uh, Ciroc pineapple with uh, uh, <laughs> Ciroc pineapple uh, with uh, yeah. uh, Red Bull. <laughs> okay, that's that. See, give me some beer. I. I I you like that sweet, you that sweet shit, you know. I I can't do all that sweet shit. That's right. that's to me, man. That's that's for the girls and shit. Uh, Let hey. them have that. Right. I used to do Hennessy and champagne. That's eighties, nineties. We went to the genuine drafts after a ball. Uh, Any Thunderbird or Silver Satin? Hell no. <laughs> Out I, here, I, if you wanted to stay warm and slang, you had to drink a little bit of nitrate. Well, shit, that was called put on a, a slingshot, and it uh, can I go there please, yes, for yes, a second? Yes. yes. All right, America, everybody that's listening, especially those on the West Coast, uh, from Texas, from Mexico, let's start at Texas, all the way up to Canada, back over here to the Pacific Islands, Samoan, Tongans, uh, all of that. We don't wear no motherfucking wife beaters. Never did. So stop saying that shit on the West Coast. Uh, I hope y'all hear me tonight. Don't ever say wife beaters again. 
Because you putting some negative shit on the West Coast again. Yeah. They call slingshots. Ask somebody that's older than you. So them white shirts that we have on ain't yeah. got shit to do with beating no motherfucking wife. Because when I grew up, and I'm in my 50s, ever since I've known, they was called slingshots. Right. Going back to West Coast culture. Just like hip-hop is an East Coast culture. Right. It's appreciated. Learn to appreciate your own fucking culture and quit picking up slogans and cliches from some other fucking region and then ditting it into our West culture. Yeah. That ain't our shit. Fuck a wife beater. But my, it's called slingshots. Ain't no color on that but white. Yeah. So you see how they try to divide us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but slingshots, West Coast. No, no, I, I agree with you. Like, <laughs> I never understood the whole white beater. And honestly, yes, the first guy that I ever heard say that was a white dude. There you go, Division. They're trying to get us. It should have just been called a white beater. Ooh. <laughs> see? Now we reclassifying it. See, but I'll probably get canceled. Slingshot that. that white beater to the white beater. Ooh. It's cold, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Rodeo. Oh, okay. Radio. Totally okay. Hell. Yes. So I remember, now, I, I had a moment there, because I remember I was, I was sipping on that Ciroc with a uh, fucking Red Bull. Don't do it no more. Croft, yeah, Croft was right here, Quick was right there. And they were just playing, you know, this, to me, was this trap shit. I couldn't get into it, bro. I, I'll be honest. I was frustrated. I was fucking angry. I was like a girl on the rag. Man. Okay? And I was just like... Then, all of a sudden, the fucking DJ got wise, and he dropped... Dun, 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 California Love. I got the motherfucking goosebumps and the fucking crowd erupted and went crazy. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, I turned around and I looked at Crawford and I said this. Why couldn't we just stick with this, bro? Why did music have to fucking change? He goes, well, it, it evolved. And I said this, no. okay? I said, it got changed on us, bro. It got changed. It didn't fucking evolve. It got changed it on us. It didn't evolve shit. We, so, st we still here. Yeah. Uh, and, and like, I, going back to Regional, geographical. Where did it seed from? So out here, like hip hop was underground in New York, northeast part. Yeah. Five three boroughs out of the five. Yeah. Out here in the West, you know, we have our own culture and stuff that we stick to in ways and slang and cliches and words we say. What happened is the radio and TV, you know, when you constantly pushing something in somebody's face, yes. when you got enough money to keep it going, and this flyer when you're going down the freeway, and this bus bench, and you keep throwing stuff in their face, that T-shirt with the with the other stuff on it instead of your stuff, yes. where you come from. S subconsciously, it's going to get in your mind, and now you start sucking it in like it's yours. Yeah. When it ain't got shit to do with you. Yeah. Now, if you, if you, I hear a lot of... I'm West Coast this and that and that. I can't tell you shit about West Coast before death row. Can you say that again for the guys in the back? Hey, I hear a lot of motherfuckers that's from the West Coast be out there hollering loud, talking this West Coast shit, throwing up W's with Cam. Let's give Cam some love because he came with that W for watch. And it transitions to the W for West Coast. So... Give Cam out of watch some love and respect for throwing up the dub. First and foremost, see, now some of y'all don't even know that. Right. West Coast aficionados and they know every goddamn thing about the West Coast, but we still here. Yeah. You motherfuckers been praising shit that ain't even West Coast. Motherfuckers ain't even from here. But y'all think they is, and then y'all praise the shit out of them and forgot about who came before them. Can't even name one fucking record from somebody from where you from. That came yeah. before Death Row Records, a fucking bad boy, a fucking, yeah. there ain't no disrespect to none of these people, but it's the culture that lost its culture and sucked up and sponged up everything else in their culture and then want to take up for that. Yeah. Well, that's not you. That's not your soil. That's not your spoil. Let that yeah. shit go and grow the fuck up. We West Coast, get back to your seed, learn your culture and your soil. Yeah. It don't mean be an asshole, respect other shit, but learn where the fuck you from and the culture that you supposed to be claiming on your shirt and hats. Just like Raider Ram and Charge and Lake and Clipper love, get a motherfucking Western love too. Absolutely. Respect your motherfucking <laughs> elders that still here. Because the rest of them gone. And they yeah. ain't even from here. We lost one out of bullshit. The rest of us still here. Pay attention. 
And the rest of us ain't fucked off. Pay attention. Look at us. Listen to us live, not rapping over no fucking lyrics. And you can go over and look over mine if you're a motherfucker ain't drunk. I might be playing with y'all just to get your fucking attention, West Coast. About West Coast culture and what you need to go back to. Fuck sticking the syringe in you. I'm a, I don't have to slap you. I could talk to you without raising my voice or cursing. <laughs> and I can take it. Oh, my God. Stop. I can't. You know, see, I'm a, I can go there. But it's no need to slap nobody or <laughs> go there either. Oh, my God. Stop, Sally. <sighs> I'm sweating. I'm going through nigga pause. Stop it. <laughs> oh, my God. No. <laughs> coin it. Coin it. Um, I, I trademark it right now. Nigga pause. I can only say this. Come on, bro. Oh my God, I'm sweating. <laughs> That's called humor, y'all. Some of y'all forgot how to fucking laugh. K, K, how? Have fun. K, but, but for the past, put how, down your guns. How, how, Boomer how, did it. How old are you? How old are you, K? Man, I'm a thou. I'm a Methuselah's age. Methuselah. <laughs> Me and knows. Uh, no, nah, let me stop. Okay, no, no if I, okay, I'm about to be 55, bro. So you got me. I know, I know. <laughs> but but my question is, okay, now. Tres años, bro, you got me. Okay, but tres años, okay. Cincuenta dos. Cincuenta dos. Okay. Sí, señora. Now, I, I do want to say this. Well, no, I want to ask this. How old do you feel inside? Because I still feel oh, like I'm in my God. early 30s, if 80, not my late 20s. Ochenta. Ochenta? Okay. Ochenta. Da, da, da. Ochenta. Nueve. 89. Okay, okay. Si, sí, senor. So you're an old soul then? Uh, that's what they tell me. I, you know, I quit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Pelón, el negro, es muy inteligente en la noche. En la noche? <laughs> si, sí, senor, por favor. Sacan tu, tu noñe. Si. Sí. Okay, okay. <laughs> Now, I want to bring you back to the High C album, and I'm going to tell you why. Me and High C, I, and I always like to share this because before we got a record deal, I was just a mixtape guy. I didn't think we were ever going to get a fucking record deal. And that's just the truth. Okay. Same here. We ended up getting a record deal and I was like, what the fuck? So Steve tells me, uh, I'm going to buy you a drum machine. Okay. Buys me a drum machine. Buys me the SP-1200. I don't know how to use it because the fucking manual is like this fucking thick. Okay, so I said, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to use it. I'm going to take it to Dre's place. So he took me to his apartment when he was living with Michele in Paramount. Dre had no motherfucking furniture. We had to set up on the fucking floor. We both fucking laid down. He got it. She told me how to sample. She told me how to get level. So I have a photographic memory. I was able to remember everything. Okay. Yeah. So from there, that's where I learned how to produce from that. And then eventually I met Sir Jinx. Uh, Mr. Jinx, he taught me how, a little bit how to fucking... I met Jinx in 87. He taught me how to work around the SP-12. And then eventually I ended up going to Greedy's, Greedy Greg's. Then that's when I asked Quick for sounds. And he mm. blessed me with a gang of percussion sounds. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my whole start. Dre, Jinx, Quick. Okay, production. Right there. Right there. Why, why is they should, that should be all the way around the world, just like other prominent producers from the Southeast and the Northeast. Right. What's up, Jinx? He hit me early today. Yeah. yeah that's a homie too. Uh let's let's go past Dre, but it's a history. That's the West. Right. When it comes to producers and production. It's, it's, Dre is the elite. There's ain't no question. Right, right. But next you gotta put and they don't enough Sir Jinx and DJ Quick right after that. Yeah. Battle Cat is in the mix, but let's be real. In the beginnings of the West is Dre, Jinx, then Quick. The Bay, uh, Rick Rock, uh, EA Ski. I'm talking about the, 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 the what what uh, is the foundation for the West. Right, right. In production and p the rappers who actually wrote their own lyrics yeah. and spit them on the mic. Right. The shit that they wrote on a piece of paper. And also, allow me to throw in, because I have to, because... His scratching on vinyl was a, a huge inspiration to me for what I do. Also on the mixtapes was DJ Pooh. Exactly. That, I, you know what? Thank you. Because I, I, I can't leave you out, Pooh. Yeah. Because that's that whole King T, yeah. Spade, Ty, all that whole Breeze. All that shit. Bro. LA. I mean, but uh, Pooh. Yeah. 
Come on. So, so, so what happened was, so we get a deal. So I'm sampling a uh, brick, that song Duzik or leave my curls alone. So we put it all. I pieced that motherfucker like a jigsaw puzzle. Cause I barely knew what the fuck I was doing. Okay. Yeah. I was like, what is that? Shh, 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 shh. Quick. It's a shaker. It's, yeah. Okay. See what quick was that? I didn't know what the fuck to call it other than shh, 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 shh. <laughs> oh, yeah, or like, do you have that? that <laughs> you got that's that a fish or that, that or fish. The, <laughs> Fish scale, uh, yeah, bro. I just, my, I just knew yeah, my knows, mouth. He's eccentric with all this, so, you know, music. I, I produce, uh, uh, leave my curls alone. So I told Cropper, you know, who's gonna be on the chorus? He goes, Oh, I'm gonna sing it. So he sang it, but I told him it needs something, it needs something. And I remember we were at a house at that time recording. You and D came over, the mic was there. There was like a fucking, like, think, think, there was like a a sheet or a blanket around you guys and you guys started singing the leave, uh, leave my curls alone chorus mm-hmm. bro let me tell you something man i don't give a fuck what anybody says that experience to me was golden bro thank to see you, you guys you, there man. and do the now i have to say this for all you producers and rappers out there that really think you know what you're doing we had to do each chorus one by one right we just didn't do one Copy it and paste it. Right. Copy no, it's it and called paste it. Work for real. Yes. Yes. Work for real. So I got to see it, and at the end of the song, you did that left. Remember that shit? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Still that can one. do it live. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Thirty years later, man. That one, and then we uh, we went to an Alhambra, a Steve Studio. We did uh you and Croft did a. Uh, Two at a time. Two at a time, yeah. We should have been a fucking single. Okay? And a video. And, and a video. We still alive. Why can't be a video when you get monetization today? Yeah. Old school artist. Yeah. Motherfucker. You got an iPhone. Let's film the video. <laughs> Motherfuckers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I said again. Motherfuckers. Fuckers. Let's shoot the videos to all these old songs. Yeah. That was so-called hits. Yeah. That still hits. Yeah. Yeah. Now we get paid for our videos instead of paying five digits to make them. Now, motherfuckers. Now, I'm, I'm going to say something. Okay. Another shot. Yeah, another shot. <laughs> okay, Rodium now. Rodium Radio. Um, I'm not your puppet who was done by this old ass wannabe Jim Morrison looking dude from Australia. Remember Ian mm-hmm. Fletcher? Yeah, he, yes, definitely. The video director, oh producer. He did, he did if our you video. want it, huh? Yes, he did do if you want it. Now, be God. honest. If you want a video, be honest, okay? Were you happy with the outcome of that video? Well, uh, you know, being our second video and being the biggest hit, that, it was an experience because I couldn't understand what the fuck we got to go uh, three sneak on the dry lake bed where the space shuttle landed. Go dry way out there. Three, four in the morning, six hours to go film out there. We could have shot that shit in the field. Yeah. Uh, you know, just it was a hot day, wait till it dry. Wait it down early in the morning while it's still dark. And when the sun come out here, it's going to dry up just like that. Dry lake bed. Yeah. Like, I, I, and I we could have threw a bed and some bras and a little, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't understand that video, bro, because, like, that song, it, it, it's a fucking I, classic. But that I, video. I could, guys, this is what it's going to be like. Uh, uh, watch this. I see you guys. It's the girls are coming to you. You, you, It's a beacon of light. And you look, you you guys are out here and you're stranded. That's what the mirror and the flash. If you go back and look at the video, we flash. Hey, we're here. We're stranded. Uh, Who gets that shit? Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. It's like, if you want to show us, like, you know, come on, baby. Yeah. yeah, Uh, yeah. Uh, put us in the damn Teddy Pendergrass kind of mode yeah, yeah, or something. Exactly. If you want it, girl, I got my suit on with the lapels big. Exactly. Little mm-hmm. fake hair on my chest and shit. <laughs> put a little fake fro on, a little uh, TWA, the teeny weeny afro, about yeah, t- two and a half inches long. <laughs> if you want it, uh, give me some, you know, put us in the old suits. Big right, ass, right. Uh, some soul. Now I threw us in the desert. It was, it was going to be abstract. It's going to be great. It, it worked. For that era, but we knew it was like, man, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I'm not your puppet video. To me, it was black and white. It looked like a fucking Godzilla movie, bro. I, I was not. It's abstract, bro. Yeah, you just gotta go with it. Go with the flow. 
This motherfucker, <laughs> it was hot that day. He was wearing leather pants, tight ass leather pants. He bent over and, and had them boots. He didn't even have drawers on. He had boots on. And yeah. the boots, uh, yeah, man. I'm telling you, dog. Yeah, man. Now after that, was, oh man, he should gave his should gave his ass a COVID test in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> Take sit on the swab, niggas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, so check now check your ass out. You sweating this shit for no reason. What the fuck? Exit out, Ian. <laughs> in comes the Hughes brothers. Oh man, I yeah, I can go there. Okay, so the Hughes brothers direct leave my crows alone at Venice my, Beach. We were all there chilling. Okay, was that the first one? Uh, first, first video one, my, out of our yes, starting our leave crew. my crows alone, and then we did uh, sit in the park, and then uh. Let the rhythm, Let the take, rhythm you. take you. Yes. And then a uh, Tupac's video. Two, uh, Brenda's got a baby. Yes. Okay, so those three artists, High C, Tony A, Second and Nine, and Tupac. Tupac, yeah. S- jump started the Hughes Brothers' careers. Absolutely. Those four videos. Absolutely. One of Second and Nine, Rhythm Take You, one of Tupac's, Brenda's got a baby. Yeah. High C's, Leave My Curl Alone, Tony A, uh, what was the other song? Uh, the video? Uh, uh, sitting in the Park. Sitting in the Park. Jump started the Hughes brothers' career. Yeah. From that. Yeah. Now, 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 let me say this. Now, in every one of our videos, both of them, they had, um, they had cameos. Did they have a cameo in your uh, Let the Rhythm Take You? Our cameo came by natural. Okay. Okay. Can I give it up for the underground king of comedy? Yeah. As everybody knows, you look him up on YouTube in the day, 22s and 2000. T.K. Kirkland. hmm Underground. Comedy, underground rap. Okay. Yeah, so if he was in, he popped up at the beach. Maybe they had something to do with it, but he was a fan. He okay. knew AMG already. So AMG was on Let the Rhythm Take You. We at the beach with Lowriders and Compton and yeah. the other side Lowrider Club. That's the homeboys back, you know, at the uh, Compton Lowrider Club. Yeah. The, the other side. But uh, he heard about it through homies. Uh, I can't say it directly to Hughes Brothers, but TK Curry in the video. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that started a good relationship back in 1992. That's when we first met. Yeah. And shouts out to TK Kirkland. Uh, but, now, I do want to say this because I, I don't know who else they, when I say they, I'm talking about Albert and Alan Hughes, because I, I kind of remained close to them because when, it, when they were editing our videos, I went to all the editing sessions. I really wanted to see what they were doing. Right. And, um, you know, I think they were like 21, 22 at the time. They were young cats. And I remember they promised a lot of people parts on Menace of Society. Fuck a promise. Uh, we at Source speak Magazine. On it, speak on Source it. Magazine, 92. You can look it up. Where it's High C, Tony A, and Second and None. And I give credit to some of the Bay Area cats and, uh, but dealing with that whole movie. And how the fuck you think that movie came about? Yeah. And that's why Second and None and Tupac not in the movie. And that's why one of them got their ass whooped. You can't make a. You have no idea of urban life and culture, going back to co- urban culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Subsections of culture. You have no aspect or perception of urban culture in your lifestyle. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Don't fake it to make it. But I don't know shit about the streets or jacking and this and that and all that shit. So that's why Second and None and um, Tupac wasn't in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, D was, D and, uh, uh, we had the leading roles. But just to go to say, and this is the Hughes brothers, you know, we got fucked. And that's why one of them got the ass with. But in the same sense, it's like, uh, don't drain us for the energy and the ideas that you have no idea about. Going back to the Source magazine in 92, we, yeah, High C, Tony A, Second and None. And it's in the Source magazine. Go look it up. Like I say, it's facts. And I still got the copy. The actual right. Copy, so yeah. we're in there with the Hughes brothers taking them on a tour. From Wilmington and three brothers from Compton. Yeah. Taking the Hughes brothers on the tour of the Sloss and Swab meet. Yeah. Around what you know as Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle wasn't there. I don't think he was born then. Not, not, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but we was in Compton yeah. niggas and the Wilmington guy. We yeah. were all, uh, taking the Hughes brothers to Sloss and Swab meet. Y'all know where that's at off Slauson. Through Rolling 60s down to Crenshaw. Right. Through Compton and all that. Showing and the big donor over there with the four or five, <laughs> where they got the idea, showing them what a jack move and how to do it. And some credit to Sophia and them from the Bay, because yeah. they showed them some shit too. But you know, they still got parts in the movie, no disrespect to none of them. Right. But you know, they fucked second to none and Tupac out of the Minister Society. A lot of them, uh, like I said, going back to the Source Awards, you can see us taking them around 
1992 in the Source magazine, right. giving them these ideas or they're asking questions. Well, this is how you do it. Well, you, this would be a good shot because it look more realistic. Very true. Because we've been through that. Y'all yeah. haven't. Y'all came out of college with film shit. Yeah. Yeah. And get got got uh you know, through our videos, them four videos we mentioned prior. Yeah. You got, got some budget money. Yeah. yeah hey, no, you're you know, right. Facts. You know, okay, now, um, let's jump a little bit ahead to Jack the Rapper. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's talk about a guy that's already passed away. And I'm gonna say rest in peace because you know, he's somebody's son, he's probably somebody's you know, he's, he's a, a father, he's a human, okay? Yeah. Tim Dog. Exactly. Okay. He drops a song called F Compton. Okay. That's, Once again. I don't know why in the fuck New, New he York, had the balls enough to New do that. New York, and that's no disrespect to New York or anybody from New York, so don't get it fucked up, New York, or somebody that's high and drunk and tripping. Right. This ain't no hate. It's just facts. So don't get the fuck out your feelings. I'm not talking about the East Coast, and I'm not talking right. about hip-hop, and I'm ta- talking about New York. I'm, I'm, we're communicating and bringing up facts that you might not even been born. Correct. And might be feeling some way right now because you're hearing some shit. Wake the fuck up. These are facts. Yeah. Nobody's hating. All right. So, uh, you know, man, uh, he's Jack the Rapper, New York, they had a perception of the West Coast. Yeah. So that's what beefed him up. Well, fuck it. I'm going to come out because I was part of this other crew, but now I'm by myself and I got, I got a little feel about myself. Man, fuck them. Yeah. Not realizing, like, hey, we're a powerhouse, too. That's what you get for not believing shit. Or you put yourself to a high esteem of, of inside yourself. It's called selfishness, which leads to greed and other things right. within yourself and your mind. And it's stuck between your ears, your eyeballs, and it go up to your head. And you're so heady of yourself and selfish. That's what kind of hip-hop in New York did to the West Coast. Yeah. So those Without of you guys getting it, get, getting uh, pre, uh, uh, letting it happen. Yes, first. if you guys want to look it up, look up Tim Dog F Compton. He did that song, and uh, he didn't realize what was coming. Right. So you want to walk us through it because if I'm correct, D walked up to him first. If I- okay, going to the story, Jack the Rapper, I believe ninety one or ninety. No, Jack the Rapper is a convention for those people and, that uh, don't not know. In Georgia, that took place, and they party in the streets, and uh, they have music conventions and going on. It's a big affair. Yes, this was a uh, ninety one, ninety two, and ninety one when we first came into it. I, yeah, I think so. Uh, rest in peace, Tiny Zeus Lister. You know from Compton as well. He was prominent in Atlanta, Georgia. He even lived down there. Yeah. So it's a lot of Compton that been in Atlanta, Georgia since the eighties. Yeah. Yeah, y'all love BMF and shit. Yeah, all right. Anyway, but uh Compton been in Atlanta, Georgia since the eighties. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that shit either, just as well as Detroit and uh before a lot of New York cats. Uh it's called Lowriders and uh Remember the mini ninjas and shit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the mini yeah, ninjas. yeah. That's the 80s, huh? Yeah, that's the well, 80s. I was Compton in Atlanta then. How'd they get the... Wasn't Puffy and Lowrider or Usher first video? I wonder where they got that Burgundy Lowrider at the end of Usher video. With Puffy and them... Oh, ooh. Don't let that be the same Lowrider that, uh, from Compton in Atlanta, Georgia, right there at the end of uh, Usher first video, Puffy and Usher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. This is shock the world. Lord have mercy. Mm. Oh Lord! Remember back in the day the helix, the scooter, the helix, all, all that. Yeah, where the introductions come? We watching shit and documentaries today on TV. Everybody lose their mind. If I say, "Ooh, that the homie," this the eighties though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Y'all better wake the fuck up. So now D walks up to him. What well, takes place? Okay, after we land, right. And getting out, it's a, all the Atlanteans. The Atlanteans. <laughs> yeah, so, ooh, Tim Dog and them out here. You know, they can't wait to see something crack. All the people that's not from California. Ooh, they said fuck Compton. They got fuck Compton t-shirts on. They walking around, you know, Jack the Rapper yeah. convention. So, I guess they feeling some way. Like, just shit, we, in, we on the East Coast. It's the Southeast, though. Yeah. We can fuck Compton t-shirts. Hey, Compton been in Atlanta for a long time, bro. You just coming up here in ninety one with that bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have you ever been to California? Like you know, Bronx, South Bronx and all well, what's Compton and Watts, nigga, LA. Right. All of the subsidiary cities within LA County that you don't know about. 
just like y'all boroughs. We got cities. Yeah. Our project's two stories. No matter if it's in L.A., San Pedro, when we were two stories. Yeah. You know, we got, uh, we ain't haters. West ain't haters. Never right. been like that. No, definitely not. You know, but Tim Dog and them, that's, they felt that presence. And so Atlanta was warning us that Tim, uh, not warning us, but like, ooh, you know, they waiting to see something. So uh, that we heard that Zeus had caught him at the hotel. And, and, you know, they was getting out of their van, and he checked them. They all stayed in the van. Like, fuck Compton, checked them shit. We wasn't there. This was what Atlanta was telling us. Right. So, you know, that's DJ Quick saying to none. That's Compton. So we just walking around downtown Atlanta, you know, going. Like, it was a little hill, a street with a little hill. Look who come down the hill with black T-shirts with white letters said, fuck Compton on them. It was about like five of them. I can't remember exactly. Uh, just a little small pack. It was probably about four or five of us. Right. These these older older men than us. You know, we like 19, 20. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So fuck Compton. Like, shit, nigga, we crossed this United States. See, and that's what uh, the clothes in mind during that time of how New York mentality and the perspective of Cali, or basically, especially Compton, because Compton rung a bell in their ears, not in hip hop, but in rap. But it, it, they considered, oh, they fucking hip hop. No, that's y'all. This right. is our shit, our culture. Y'all just don't respect it. And, and we're supposed to. Appreciate y'all shit, but y'all don't appreciate our shit. We appreciate y'all shit and love it. Y'all didn't do the same for us, and they try to cover it up. So, but going back to Tim, dog, they walking down the hill like all happy glory. Yeah. yeah, you know we a crew. We 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 belling. Yeah, D like stepped up first, said his words and shit. We're checking niggas, we surround them, some little niggas. We ain't that little though, but it's like. They feel like, damn, it's real. He right. tells them, hey, man, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why don't y'all just diss us back? That's the way we do it. Right then and there, that cemented to me like, y'all some fake motherfuckers, man. Y'all motherfuckers, what you talking about, grown ass man? No, this is how we do it so we can go back and forth with each other and build up. I understand the business sense of it, but you should have talked to somebody first, first. instead of saying, Fuck Compton. You don't know what the fuck going on in Compton. Ain't nobody said fuck New York or fuck hip hop. Nah, so he from New York. He said hip hop was dead. So the fuck y'all fucking with us for? Yeah. You fuck with it with then, homie. And hip hop is New York once again. Ain't got shit to do with New Jersey, Philly, uh, Boston, anything in that north, uh, Maine, nothing in that region. Definitely Texas. That's Southern rap. Atlanta, Georgia was tag team and uh, whoop there it is. And, um, <laughs> not, no disrespect, right, though. No, I know. Uh, until, I know. Until Outkast came. Yeah. That, that don't sound like hip-hop. Hip-hop, KRS-One. Um, Marley Marl, MC Shane. Yeah. Uh, Melly Mel, Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five. That's hip-hop. I said a hip hop sugar hill. That's hip hop. The rest of that shit, Houdini and all that, that's called rap, good rap music. Cause Run DMC had rock infused and they shit. How the fuck is that hip hop? Yeah. yeah. How's Houdini hip hop? They was lightweight singing melodies too, harmonizing. Yeah. We didn't invent the shit, but we made it pop. Second to none made it popular. You see how I can, uh, I can admit that? We didn't invent the shit. We didn't start it. We ain't the kings of singing raps and harmonies over, over, over rap. Not hip-hop, over rap. Ain't nobody invented rap. That shit was in the 1800s. Scat, bebop, jazz, Cab Calloway. Ain't nobody invented no goddamn rapping that's rapping since the 80s and 90s. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no goddamn queen, no rapper, no hip-hop. So ain't no such goddamn thing. Right, Jazz, right. rock, or classic rock. Classic jazz, which would be the what came first, classic rap, yeah. classic hip hop. For those who don't know, you got Spectrum, go to channel one and press up. You're going to see music choice. Go and look for your damn self right now. It's going to say MC, that music choice, yeah. on Spectrum. It's going to tell you a channel to say hip hop and there's a channel to say rap. And then 
throwback jams. So right then and there, it's a difference in rap and motherfucking hip hop. Start waking the fuck up. Hip hop is New York culture and it spread across the world and everybody loved it. They took advantage of it and ran with it. It's called West Coast Rap, Street Reporters, DJs. And we telling the truth about our stories. You yeah. just don't like it or believe it. Yeah. You motherfuckers making up shit to sell records. Well, we wasn't even trying to sell records. Motherfuckers came looking for us. No, that all y'all was the, the investors right down there on Wall Street. So we didn't have that shit. We had a hustle. Yeah. It's called Mexicans, so called niggas, Samoans, Tongans, Asian Pacific. Yeah. That Puerto Ricans. That's what's out here. They some of them didn't even know what a fucking Mexican was in 1990. And you know what? In the Northeast, but no, so smart. That is very, very true. True. Very, very true. I got called some of my New York homes. They didn't even know what the fuck a Mexican was. That, that's very, very true. Until we took it to them. They knew Puerto Ricans, Haitians, Cubans, Dominicans. Yeah. You know. Remember that's Super- how. That's how kind of selfish some people could be. And that ain't just New York. Right. This is around the world, but just goes to show you with facts. Yeah. No, I remember um, before death row and bad boy. Wake the fuck up! <laughs> and this ain't the drink talking. This is black ass KK. This is black ass KK yes. on Rodium Radio with Tony A. Yes, let's give it up. Uh, take a breather for that. <laughs> we are on Rodium Radio with DJ K- Tony A. K, before you had your name KK, did you ever have a another always rap had name? KK? Fuck a rap name. See, this is the difference with hip hop. Okay. We didn't put on no facade and shit. We wore the shit that we woke up with and put on. We didn't go dress up to mess up. Some people didn't like that shit because we right. didn't wear polka dots and dr- put our... Let me try some new shit. <laughs> Hold on, I'm a grown-ass man. <laughs> Ooh, shit. <laughs> you forgot to spin. Here, here, comes some kid, here comes some kids as grown as a motherfucker. Forgot the gold teeth. <laughs> too happy. Too happy. What, what, how did y'all get that much money for the record deal? We weren't looking for a record deal. That came looking for us. Yep. Off of underground tapes that spread across the United States in the 80s. 89 right. and 90. That's right. Uh, Dev Jam. Uh, why? Dev Jam and Profile had bidding wars on Compton niggas. Yeah. In 1990, when our video budget was y'all album budget. Oh, Ain't the that fuck the out of truth. here. Ain't that the fucking truth? Well, I'm, I'm drunk and tripping. On Rodium Radio with DJ Tony A. With KK, a.k.a. Lou Ross. It's a brand new hat. That you still had that thing on there, huh? Yeah, for months. Oh, I'm ooh, fresh. I'm so fresh and so clean. So fresh and so, yes. Nah, West Coast, baby. Okay, K, now, your album is dropped, okay? We're talking about the self-entitled album, Second to None. Okay, now for the fans that may not know, how did you guys come up with the name Second to None for UND? Well, we were going through starting with a couple of older cousins, and mm-hmm. you know, outside me and D, they was like, man, they got something. Shit. You know, man, it's, it's, we could be it's four of us, man. It's K and D and us two, the older cousins. It's like right. four of us. So I, I came up with the name for Second None, but just leading up to it. All right, well, y'all really can't rap shit, you know. So, <laughs> I was the Fotan clan first is the two older cousins and me and D. Fotan clan? Fotan. Number four, T A N. Four tough ass niggas. And then it, uh, this the 80s. Right, right, right. Of so, course. You know, like, well, y'all niggas, shit, y'all can't rap. Me and D doing all the ra- rapping and writing and shit. Hold on. They just wanted to be down. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but, you know, well, we doing the work. Well, right. it's just two of us. Right, right. Man, y'all should be two of a kind. Get the fuck out of here with two that corny ass, corny ass name. <laughs> fuck out of here. I was family members too. But I knew the, a guy that wanted to name himself Pound Cake. The, I said, but, no, you man, just want your cake pounded. Right. That's what you want. You, know, you like moistness, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that shit get moist after a while. A little moisture. Pound cake. Pound cake. Get out of here. Stop it. <laughs> oh, oh. Two of a, a kind. delicacy Damn. and shit. You want to be a delicacy, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, after two of a kind, that's corny. Nah, man, it's two of us and shit. You know, we ain't better than nobody. I'll keep God first. So, and like, I, I came up with the name, uh, thinking of, you know, it's me and my cousin. The other two, hey, you know. Yeah. Not like hating or nothing, but it, what makes sense. 
Yeah. Two of a kind, corny. What's a better way that we keep God first? I ain't shaking the no man. I don't feel that way, but I ain't being disrespectful. We, 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 we right here. Right. Second to no man. Oh, what? God first, second to none. That's dope. So that's how I came up with the name. That's dope. Now, let's jump ahead because honestly, we, we, we got to eventually get to the phone calls. But I do want to say this, that listening to that album, and I shared this with you guys when we did the documentary when we were in Palm Springs. Okay. To me, what makes a classic album, and I don't know if there's any more classic album with today's rap, okay, is where you play the whole album from beginning to end and you don't skip. And you know all the fucking lyrics. Right. Okay? One thing that a lot of people may know or may not know is that not only did we do a lot of shows together, not only did we record together, but I was also a fan. Like a uh, fucking good music. Thank you. Okay. If it, good. If, it was, if it was including us, not to cut you off. No, yeah, of course. Now, I want to ask you when you guys did If You Want It, because as of right now, that is the song that pretty much everybody knows you from, even though there's many hits the most, on that. The most popular in the United States. Right. Okay. In the United States, that's the most popular. Right. One. Now, <laughs> when that song was done, did you know that? What it was going to become? We didn't know none of this shit. Okay. Was, I, and I'm glad you're sharing love, that. None of this shit. We wasn't looking for a record deal. Right. So let's get that in mind and attuned to how the, the past two generations, everybody's looking to be famous since this social media platform and the internet became a part of people's yes. lives. But we wasn't looking for that. We were looking to have fun making some good music. You know, in my bedroom on Spruce Street or quick coming down to my mom's house and we in the bedroom or in the garage or after the fact, you know, just being in a room with a microphone and a four track, an eight track. Yeah. Growing to a 16 or 24, getting in the studio, enjoying music and uh, the the tools before PlayStation was the SP-12. Yes. That, well, hey, quick got a hold of that motherfucking uh, book. We couldn't get, we couldn't, didn't have a chance reading it, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All love though, he got, that's why he, that's why he is who he is today. Yeah, yeah. You know, studied that motherfucker. Now, I'm glad you said that because I had another legend here that I interviewed, uh, Tony Gonzalez, Tony G from KD Mix really? Masters. Yeah, definitely. Who did La Raza Mentirosa. Okay, he, he did it amongst other songs. But those are the two big popular songs that he did. It started the, uh, uh, if you will, a Latin movement. Okay. Yeah. He told me here, nobody nobody knows how to make a hit. He goes, if they tell you that this is going to be a hit, he goes, they're fucking lying. Because exactly. we can never say, this is going to be the summer anthem. You know, it's the fans. That, exactly. It's That's the, what got lost in the sauce, especially with the West. Yes. That's it. How the fuck you know? You going to buy it or you going <laughs> to like it? You made it. Put it out there and try it. Yeah. Some of these people sit on shit. This is a hit. They never put the shit out. Uh, Built up into themselves and so yeah. much and shit and hey, it's not for you made it. Let it go. Yeah. Quit trying to doctor and and let the shit go because it's not you that's gonna buy it or like it or appreciate it. Yeah, because uh, this is what I call producers here. I, we can do everything. I can produce too, but you know what? My forte is writing and, and hustling. Yeah, I go. I know how to. I'm a people's person. That's what the people call me. Yeah. I don't call myself that. I know how to communicate with people. I'm a people's person. That's what the people say. <laughs> so uh, I might know how to communicate with people to get something. You don't know how to talk to them. Uh, even I might be drinking and still know how to communicate with people. And, uh, get to the point. Or right. Get the message across or be able to listen to the message. Right, right. You know, so I might not have time to sit down and make the beats. Even though I know how to do the shit. Right. And we all did. That's the difference with our crew. We know how to do all that shit. Right. So, uh, you know, my forte was going to get the, hu the hustling and shit, man. Now, uh, now I'm going to ask you a tough question, but I, I, I want an answer, okay? The first album, the second ten album, okay? What was KK's favorite, if you have one, song off of that album? Hmm. And, I'll, and then I'll tell you mine. If it would be a favorite one, one of the first favorite ones was the life of a player. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, why? If if you could because give me an of the beat. Okay. Dude, that is just the beat before the sample. Okay. 
Doom, doom, doom. It was a fat back, I believe, because that, right. it's just the um the trumpet, you know, the warrior, you know, right. that that the beats, the drums, how they move. Doom, 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 doom. It's like running, you know, in the parade, feeling proud. It's a proud beat. Right. That's how, you know, not so much, but that's it's a drive. You right. know what I'm saying? So the life of a player, straight out the money belt to the bank, the upper high class where a nigga rank. And people always try to say they feel it. Then wanna come with the bullshit. I don't want to deal with a bitch on a get rich quick plan, trying to make the player be her man. And the niggas on the nut jock roll, being a hoe for a player, they might as well be on the stroll. <laughs> 1990, niggas. Life of a player, second to none. Okay, mine was this one, and this was actually seeing you guys perform and person play on the debt. Back in the day, people don't know what a debt is. That is. is. Digital, Digital audio, audio tape. tape. Okay. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong. Uh, you know what? Yeah, thank you too. That was one of the first underground tape hits. Right. You and D are out there. You guys do your part. Then the fucking the beat stop. The bass line kick in. Quick comes out and starts rapping. He, that's how he comes out. Now the quickster. Yes. Take a different approach. Yes. Yeah. Bro, when I saw when I saw that, and then the reaction of the crowd, it's insane, bro. It's That's insane, a blessing bro. right there. It, it is a blessing, you know. So for me, like, I had a lot of great time. I'll give you another memory, and I'm going to say this. Rest in peace to Bundy. Mm-hmm. You got security, mm-hmm. okay? Rest in peace to him. We were at the Palladium in, in Texas, Houston, Texas. You guys are performing. Somebody throws a water bottle at D, okay? Bundy jumps out into the crowd, and he starts fucking that dude up. That's when he jumped out. I don't know if it was a left side stage. He just went down yes. and took like a whole mass of crowd with him. Yes. Yeah, I yes. remember that. Started. Steve Yano caught that on video. Man. Rest in Rest peace, Steve. Rest in peace, Bundy. We, yeah. we got to take him to Hawaii with us. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that was like a bonus for him because one of the other security kind of fucked up. So we took Bundy to Hawaii instead of him. Hey, bro, I'm going to tell you a funny story. I don't know if I ever shared this with you. I shared it with Croft, okay? We were at a hotel. I don't even fucking remember where we were at a hotel. But I know it was like, I don't know if it was, fuck, I want to hit North Carolina maybe. Somewhere out that way, okay? We were in a hotel. That was the first time I met, I met Breed, MC Breed. Rest in peace. Yeah, MC Breed. Um, I was okay? just talking about him too. Yeah. yeah. So Bundy, remember, he used to have a chair sitting outside of you guys' doors. Yeah, he was, at the, yeah, he'd be yeah. posted. Yeah, he was posted up. So I go out there and I sit and I'm eating a sandwich right next to him. I just wanted to chat with him. Okay. Yeah. So I'm talking to him and he's like this. He goes like this. He goes, Scoping. He goes, "Hey, ain't nobody looking, man." But I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? I put this on everything I love. He goes like this. Hey, is this how you throw it up? Yeah. <laughs> hey, he used to do it, man. He used to do this. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted, hey, he's the first Tupac. He wanted to be down. <laughs> oh, he, he did, bro. And he's just throwing up like this and shit. He's like, hey, man, this the right way? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's, rest in peace, Bundy St. Louis. Oh, yeah, bro. Natural Bridge Road and yeah. Smith Center. That's old Bundy in there. But another time, uh, we were in um, Tony Lane's house, his brother Inch. Yeah. Okay, I drove out there because he was... I'll tell you after. I'm not going to say it, you know, right, on right, air. Right. But I went over there to pick up some something, and uh, saw Bundy there. It was a croft, okay. And then Ducky shows up, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Ducky shows up, and then uh, uh, Ducky meets Bundy. So Bundy's kind of new to the neighborhood, I guess, you know. And then he was like, <laughs> he was like, "Hey, is that that guy right there, Ducky?" And I was like, "Yeah." He goes, "Is he somebody big?" And I go, "Yeah, don't look at him too long." He goes, "I'm not. I'm not. I'm not." <laughs> <laughs> And Bundy was a big dude himself, but you, see, you yeah. know he understood. Yeah, he understood the respect. Yeah. You know, but Ducky was actually uh, locked up when my brother. My brother did eleven years at Taft Correctional Facility, yeah. and Ducky was over there. So when I would go visit my brother, I'd see I see him out there. Yeah, see, yeah. I didn't so, know that. But that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the homie, man. And, uh, another homie, uh, uh, Yellow Eyes Keith. Yeah, definitely Keith, man. Yeah. Keith, I, I love you, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I, I, I saw him at the gym. And um, I recognized him, and I was like, I know that dude from somewhere. Because this is years later now, you know? So I walked up to him, and uh, um, he, he goes, I know you look familiar. And I was yeah, uh, um, Tony, A., remember from, from back in the day? And he goes, like, oh, yeah, I know you, Tony. So I told him, I, t- I, see, I see you training somebody. Still training. Yes, yeah, still training. 
And he goes, yeah. And I said, I don't know what I'm doing. He goes, yeah, I could tell you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I didn't know what the hell I was doing. In this day and age. Yes. Yeah, but he was on point back yes, then. He, he was. So Goals, he, gym, member. Uh, yes. Yeah, Bro, he's like 61, 62, and still, still fit. I, I, okay, I'm, I have to say this. Yeah, I'm going to just give it briefly. Yeah. Everybody knows about this just like count, but the Denver account. Mm-hmm. I have to speak on it. It was just. Uh, the Denver account. The what, song Just Like Compton. Right, right, right. And the event that took place with the actual fighting. Yeah. Yellow Eyes got hands. And me and D, he was like, y'all go, I got it. He said, we was ready. You know, he was like, get the hell. <laughs> uh, no, no, we fighting too. He was like, yeah. right. And he had it. We watching yeah. like, go. Bing, bing. I'm talking about drops on the first knock. Yes, yes. Yes, indeed. Yellow Ice, that's my brother. I mean, yeah, I remember uh, I saw him play. He, dude, in his 60s, he's still playing basketball instead of out running a lot of people, man. Yeah, I'm almost so, there. I'm the same, well, you know. I, 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 ain't, I ain't as buff, but uh, <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> All good. Now watch out, 23. We're going to go ahead and uh, dust uh, your junk ass off. <laughs> take some calls because we could be here all night talking history, but. I want the fans to call in and... Um, yeah, y'all call in now. Okay, let's go ahead and put up that number, Alex. Let's go ahead and put these headphones on. We'll take about 30 minutes with the phone calls and let's see what happens. Yes, sir. You can put your headphones on whenever you're ready. Okay. All right. Man, can I... Uh, you got to take a piss? El baño. El baño. Uh, Norbert, <laughs> show, show them the local tree. <laughs> okay, don't put up that number. Did you put it up yet? Please, por favor, señor. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, p- put me on this camera real quick. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to take no call. So, everybody, um, just hold on one second, okay? Give me one second. You know what? I'm going to answer the first phone call because it usually does, never, I mean, never even works. So, there, I hung up. So, hold on. Don't call yet, okay? Don't call yet, okay? Because I'm always taking a piss. But uh, you got to take one of them long-ass eight-ball pisses. But uh, uh, he'll be he'll be back in a minute. Okay, I hope you guys are enjoying it because I'm really really enjoying it. I love talking history. I love talking uh, West Coast, you know, rap history. So once again, if you got the balls, make the calls. Just give my boy a chance to uh, drain the main vein, and he'll be back in a minute. You know, so um, we're just in a commercial right now. So let's keep it pushing, everybody. Hope you like I said. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying this. Let me see. Uh, let me see who's on the live chat. Okay. Everything good over there, Alex? Okay, cool. Yep, yep. Okay, hopefully you guys are enjoying it. You know what? If you ever want to ask a, a question, go ahead and ask a question, okay? Okay. You know, if anything. Um, hold on. He's taking, I think he must have had a 40 before he got here. So, because he's, he's taking a little too long now, but. Um, we're going to wait patiently because I know you, a lot of you guys have questions, so make sure you guys call in and ask what you got to ask, okay? Yeah. And uh, yeah. we're eventually going to get into his record that's out right now that uh, you you guys need to tap in and, uh, um, you know, go ahead and cop that. You know okay? what? Uh, I'm going to say what people are saying in the live chat. They okay. said that they want Quick to call in. Okay. So um, hopefully he's on the okay. live chat. Okay. Um, let's see when, as soon as he calls in, we'll let you guys, uh, call in and ask KK, whatever you guys want, Compton question, a rap question, a second to none question, whatever question you guys want. Um, you guys can go ahead and ask him. So let's see. Okay. Go out there and make sure he's shaking it. <laughs> Let's shake it for him. So anyways, uh, you know, one thing I realized that pouring gas, Alex, it's like taking a piss. You know, you're like holding it, hold it, but yeah, yeah. you shake it to get the last little drops out at the very end. Yeah, yeah. That's like taking a piss. I just realized that today. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, It sucks because it's like liquid gold. Liquid gold, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Come on, Kay. A.K.A. Lou Ross. Okay. Here we go. All right, go ahead. We like to say, if you got the balls, make the calls. Let's go ahead and put that number up again. Is it up again? Yep. Okay. Who's going to be the first caller? Whoever is the first caller gets a KK teddy bear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> caller, your name or where are you calling from? Hey, Tony A. Caesar from Paris, to be exact. Caesar from Paris, to be exact. He's talking about Paris here, not Paris over there. 
So what's good, my bro? Paris, California. Paris, California, where the women are busted, but that's what's good about them. That's right. <laughs> you ain't got to do no breaking in. First, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. First of, uh, first of all, Tony, before I address your guest, uh, I was getting a, a little uh, worried. I didn't think I'd be able to get through. Uh-huh. Uh, thinking, knowing Miss Pac-Man saw the flyer, and she probably thought KK meant King Cox that you're probably giving out. So uh, <laughs> lucky I got in. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. All right. I, I got to get shot on yeah, that. I'm, hurt, I'm hurting, Tony. I'm hurting. I'm trying. Uh, hey, Second keep, of all, keep it I'd pushing. Like say, <laughs> I'd like to say uh, hello to your guest, Mr. KK. Hello, big fan. Hey. Big fan. Mr. Uh, I'll finish up my drink and, and wash my dick in the sink. Oh, oh shit. Man. Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah. that second of love, love, bro. And hey. you know, and you know what, what's funny about that, KK, is uh, I'm married now, happily married. Once in a while, I still wash my dick in the sink. Yeah, and you, army. you have to. It's called cleanliness. That's right. You know what I mean? You use baby but wipes. Anyways, uh, I, I got a couple, <laughs> three questions for you, uh, Mr. KK. Yes, sir. Uh, Listen, first of all, your last album, dedicated album, great album. My baby thinks so too. <laughs> and uh, I got one more question. Right I got on. is there is there a a European a Europe second to none album? Well, uh, you're speaking on that's the homie Alpha from France. Yeah. Uh, during the time, like in 2014, we first went to Paris. Yeah. Spent a couple of weeks yeah. in Paris. Uh, you know. Doing music, shooting videos, getting the experience, and uh, being in uh, Europe or yeah, whatnot. Yeah. Uh, first time for Second to None, 2014. Uh, you know, I lost my brother at that same time. But, um, yeah, that's uh, Alpha, the homie Alpha, Al Picha. It's, uh, we did a few songs, Second to None, KK, little stuff. It's still some stuff coming out this year. Okay. Yeah, you know, so it's definitely... Uh, Paris, France, second to none, black ass, KK, Boomer did it, connection. That'll work. So we're going to hit y'all outside there with some spring. Yeah, Boomer did it. Spring and summertime music, Paris via Compton. Paris, France. Paris, France. Yeah. Paris, France. <laughs> I have a tower and, and me. Yeah, yeah. All good, my brother. You got another That's one? That's right. Yes, sir. Appreciate yeah, that love, bro. I got one more. Go for it. I got one more, Mr. KK. Yes, um, sir. There was an old, uh, an old DJ Quick interview, uh, I believe, talking about him saying uh, Second to None as a group wouldn't sign uh, to a record deal because of the Illuminati. Can you uh, shed light into that? Well, if he said that, I mean, we didn't, we didn't accept certain deals, but the Illuminati and the whole, that whole terminology or just that term itself. That didn't have shit to do with it. Just didn't like the terms right. of the contract. Yeah. See, a lot of people get caught up in uh, that thing. It ain't had shit to do with us. It was just a, a contract that didn't deal with. Just a lot of money. And some people trying to still figure that out. Why would you turn down some money? Well, I don't agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And I have the power to say that. Yeah. That's why we're still here. Right on. Yes, right sir. On. And nothing, nothing but uh, nothing but the best for you. I know you got another album coming out. Can't oh yeah, definitely. Second uh, nine ain't stop. Mr. KK. Man, I appreciate yeah, the love, definitely. Stop. Thank you very much. And one last thing, Tony A. Yes, sir. Uh, Miss Pac Man looks like a fucking rana standing up, walking around. <laughs> 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 All right. Got him. All right, bro. All right. Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. Next caller. Come on, let's go. Okay. So the Illuminati never approached you and said wear a dress on the cover? Uh, you ever seen me in a dress? <laughs> now, I can address a situation, right, the subject right. matter. I can address something, but yes. me in a dress? No. Man, fuck all that. Yeah, call. I'm Somebody call, gets call shit slapped out of them. Call her your name. <laughs> where are you calling from? I bring they wrecked them up to their mouth. Oh, my bad. Go ahead, Go ahead, big dog. What's going on, second to none? Hey, I just want to talk to you about... Uh, your experiences on the DJ Quick, the Rhythmalism album, which is one of my all-time favorites, and you were part of some of my favorite tracks on that album. Just want to see how you felt about all the producing and how that album went down. And, you know, much love, bro. You're looking well. You're looking sharp. Thank you, you know. And uh, thank you, bro. I appreciate the love. You know, just want to hear about this music. 
You want to speak on that rhythmism? Oh, yeah, definitely. That was a blessing right there in 1998. Uh, Arista Records picking up DJ Quick and Second to None in 1998, right. uh, which led to Quick's album, Rhythmism, and Second to None's classic second album, yeah. official album, classic 220. Uh, doing that album, it was a blessing uh, where you see rappers get to bring back R&B in a sense with the Hand in Hand single with yeah. DJ Quick where El DeBarge is a part of it. Second to nine. I originally wouldn't even be on that song. That would have been D quick and sugar free in Elder Barge. Yeah. So just to show you the good little how things worked out for the better. Not so better, but that's how was, that's how it was went. So that experience with rhythmalism, that album in itself, thanks to Quick too, it was just another enlightening moment to show you skills and talent and how we appreciate good music or sounds. Drums, percussion, engineering, engineering, listening, paying attention, not trying to do too fucking much, and appreciating those who came before us, like a LD Barge, to even work with him, yeah, is a blessing in itself because, like I say, paying homage to those who came before you in good music, yeah, everybody loves the Barge, absolutely, get a chance to work with that. A lot of people don't know Michael Jackson, Prince, and recipes to them, but yeah, we the second down the quick is a little different. We yeah. just ain't no fucking rappers. We we're good entertainers and skilled people that like good music. Absolutely. Thank you, caller. Hopefully that answers your that, question, that, homie. Hey, that, that's what's up, man. Hey, I just want to say much respect. That was one of my favorite albums too. It's one of my all time favorites. Yeah. My first daughter was born to uh one of the tracks on that album. I will not mention the name of the track, but hey. Appreciate it very much. You guys keep on. Hey, man. Thank you for the love, man. Appreciate it. All right. Let's keep it pushing. If you want to grab that bottle, uh, uh, boom, you can grab it. You can. Okay. All right. We'll keep it out the shot. Yes. All right. Let's go, everybody. Uh, You got time to make the the calls if you got the balls. If not, we're going to keep talking to Lou Rawls. Okay. Call her your name or where are you calling from? Um, this is AP from BP. We in the house, boys. What's good, my bro? You got a question? Yeah. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you, Tony, for taking the call. And uh, I just want to share some words with KK. What's going on with it, bro? What's good, KK? Um, I, um, I want to say, like, the first uh, Second to None album is probably one of my favorite albums of all time. Thank and you, uh, thank I just you. heard your recent album, Dedicated. Yes. Uh, that was another great album, too. Thank you. And thank you. D put me onto that. Uh, that's good looking. That's love right there. And it's uh, what the West Coast needs to do more. Appreciate the West and uh, spread the love of that. No, and I Absolutely. appreciate that's good looking on deep part. And I appreciate your love or uh, even listening or wanting to hear what Second and None or KK brought to the table. And you know, that appreciating that West Coast love, man. So uh what how the dedicated yes, sound sir. to you? You know, my son produced uh predominantly ninety nine percent of that album. That's Boomer did it. You know, Quick did one track on the album and Boomer did the other nine. Dope. You know what I'm saying? So we got to give some credit to Boomer's production and engineering and mixing. Yeah. Quick mastered it, but Boomer and Quick put the final touches on it. Quick, oh, my album was done. Yeah. Nine songs dedicated. Produced and mixed by Boomer. All of that. My yeah. son Boomer. Quick heard it. Man, you can't, how you going to uh, do an album without some shit from me, you know? Yeah. Which is only right, and that's the only reason why I, like, I accept it, because my album was done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 21, 20. You know what I'm saying? So Good. dedicated with two Ks. But, uh, yeah, man, I appreciate the love. Uh, definitely, man. But uh, Thank you, caller. You got any other question, or are we good? I hope I answer oh, yeah. something. Uh, yeah. Thanks, KK. Um, Tony, I just want to. I just want to tell you something really quick, bro. So, um, I was, uh, 
I was watching the, the podcast you were on yesterday, Dr. Greenthumb. Yeah. And um, uh, is B-Rule going to come back? Yes. He'll be back okay, in, in yeah. February. Because um, I'm looking up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm looking after that one. And, okay. um, hey, you guys got to get motherfucking Cycle Realm in the building. That would be fucking dope as hell. <laughs> All good, my bro. All good. Thank you, my bro. Well, I'll, I'll work on it. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, bro. Have a good one. Thank you. You too. Okay. All right, callers. Let's keep it pushing. Who's going to be next? Who wants to talk to KK? He's giving away a free CD. <laughs> <laughs> It wouldn't. Uh, uh, I'm sold out right now. Yeah. Uh, appreciate the love. Dedicated yes. to album. Caller, uh, your name yeah. or where are you calling from? This is Ralph. I'm from Pomona, California. What's going on, Ralph? P- 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 Pomona. Yeah, I like to. Uh, thank you, Tony, a for accepting my phone call. I'm a big fan of your Rhodium show. I thank you. Tune in to. Uh, um. But I, I always wanted to know uh, um, if you really want it was inspired by, like, ghetto boys mind playing tricks on me. <laughs> no, 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 let me say something uh, before you answer that, Kay, okay? As a producer, okay? Yes, sir. I do want to say this. Same sample, okay? Flipped two different yeah. ways. Flipped two different ways, and it worked. Watch this. And it worked. Go ahead, King. All right. How Do You Want It is Tupac's song. Okay, it's three songs. Uh, two of them came out in 1991 to 92 as singles. Mm-hmm. Ghetto Boys, Rap A Lot Records, Minds Playing Tricks On Me. Correct. They were in Texas during that time when they were creating that, or I don't know if Red or Scarface did the actual track, but, you know, Different minds at different times. Right. We were in Compton when I bought the record, the Isaac Case Tough Guys yes. album. I bought that album, that vinyl. Yeah. To, to get the sample off of that. You know, Keevil's record on Rosecrans before he cut, shut down. Uh, went out of business, man, quick. Ran up there and just bought all the records that he thought and I thought. Could work. Could, yeah, it could work. So, um, Ghetto Boys and Second and Nine. Using the same sample different ways in 91 or 1990, actually, sampled and used it different ways, but it sounded similar. Years later, here comes, what was it, Johnny J did that track, I believe, for Tupac? Yeah. Uh, and Jodeci? Jodeci, yeah. Okay. A lot of people don't know the history of Second and None and Jodeci as well before Jodeci got to death row or to even Tupac for that matter. Yeah. You could take Jodeci's history when they first came out. Who was promoting them on the West Coast? Because we was homies from doing shows together because they yeah. was on the road with Father MC in 91. Yeah. Well, KC and Mary J. While we were on the road with EPMD, Father MC, and Chubb Rock in 1991 that's on tour. Right. And uh, that's how I got introduced to KC and Mary J. Before yeah. the whole Jodeci. But, uh, yeah, going back to that, so... Definitely, how do you want it with the same sample? Let's get real, people. Wake the fuck up. If you want it, how do you want it? Get the fuck out of here. Y'all better start waking up because it's too much in your face. That's why we're saying about today's uh, generation and the perception of people. How dare you? Get the fuck out of here. You know what it is. Once y'all start telling the fucking truth, the cool weight on us, you know it. Speak up. Fans, you hear it in your fucking ears. Y'all want to do something? Go back and look at the dates. Yeah, we, we in Compton, me and Quick. With I have an idea with the record I bought. I like this tough guy soundtrack. This sample, Isaac Hayes. I like that. Yeah, my homie know how to work the drum machine because he took the manual and learned it. And learned that, it. Yeah, it, and held it. We couldn't get a hold to the manual so I could learn the SP-12 so I could sample. But learned how to sample as well. But, hey, brother, and what the West don't do, you do it better than me. Won't you do that? I do this better than you. Everybody stay in their place, and then we stay together. You good at that? You better at that? You good at that? Let's stay with that. This shit work. 
So you sample faster, you do it faster, you do it faster. Here's my idea. It's called producing. Yeah. You don't have no fucking idea how you're going to produce something. You got to start with a fucking idea. But anyway, the ideas was in two different places, two states at one time. It's called Ghetto Boys Rap A Lot Records. And second to none, KK and Quick coming up with that production idea off a record I bought. Yeah. Yeah. If you want it, uh, how my plan tricks on me. And two different tempos. Two different tempos. How many years later? How do you want it? How do you feel? I okay. Like the way you do if that. you want it, yeah, cause yeah, cause we can sing for real without rapping and singing over our fucking lyrics. That was before auto tune. Fuck auto tune. Fuck auto tune. These guys are doing fuck, choruses fuck before auto tune, so fuck I don't. Fuck you need help for with your vocals. Don't you got a voice? God gave you the gift. Use your voice. T Pain only nigga I give credit for auto tune. Yeah. Everybody else suck my dick. <laughs> got him. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> or did it? <laughs> All good. Dedicated. Y'all get that album. Check it out. Second to none. Dot com. Dedicated album by Black Ass KK West Coast. First solo album in thirty some years. All of the fans around the world. When you gonna put out a record by yourself? You did. So, in 2022, and I'm just now starting to promote it. January 11th, 23, on the rodeo. That's Radio right. with DJ Tony Yay. Yeah. That's right. Uh, all right, caller, we got to let you go. We got to uh, get to the next Appreciate call. Appreciate the love, caller. Absolutely. Stay blessed, homie. Mm hmm. Okay, let's go. You got the balls. Make the calls. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yes, let's go right here. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Is Isaac from Torrance. Isaac from Torrance. What's good, my bro? Ooh, you know about that police shit over there. <laughs> what's up, Tony? Hey, what's up, KK? What's up, bro? Hey, man. Uh, yeah, like everybody else, that first album was just classic for me. Thank you. I was 14 when that came out. It's just, I think I still got it memorized word for word. <laughs> but my question for you, homie, was out of all of y'all, out of you, D, AMG, and Quick, now I know this is subjective because you not, you would probably rate yourself first, but who's the who's the best natural lyricist like if you had to rank all four of y'all who's the who's the best lyricist out of y'all the just best, naturally quick and second to none in amg <laughs> if that if that could answer the thing you know without being individual is right and uh we're all equal in a sense now when uh, as lyricists are we write our own lyrics every Always did and still do. Uh, sing your own shit. Uh, me and D and yeah. Quick sing our own shit. More or less, second to none, dude. But Quick also does sing. You see how we give each other credit and and tell the truth. Well, right out of my mouth. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean. So uh, I would say all of us is an equal thing, and that's why we wasn't a group and we came out as individuals and came together as individuals. Uh, to make an impact It's just like a hand You got five fingers It was five oh. individuals Put it together Bam You got an impact Right and That's how it worked You know You know One thing I want to say To the caller hey. Is this oh, Hold on caller real, real quick If you look at Every uh, Look at High C's album Second to none Quicks AMG There were no features Everybody just exactly. wrapped on it Exactly Everybody just wrapped on Each other's records And bringing each other up Right That got lost in the sauce Somewhere right. Yes we didn't know today and, we have man. I'm gonna charge you this for a verse. I'm gonna charge you this for a beat. That shit didn't even exist. Right. Now, Let's make some money first, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna look out for you. Now today you got guys doing twelve song albums, and each song has a feature. Okay, it's, that's a fucking compilation, homie. They don't believe in their skill or craft. Maybe they don't have a skill and craft, or don't believe in the art to make art because they're not artists. No, they probably just had uh, pink hair, uh, skinny jeans, uh, hit a vape pen, and uh, gold teeth. You know what? Hold and on. I'm feeling it. I got, I'm feeling the vibe. It's the, ooh, the energy. The energy in the room right now got me. It's grasping me. I can't. Oh, no. <laughs> hey. <laughs> the energy is wrong. I can't, I can't write one one sentence. Yeah. All good, caller. You got, you got something else? Yeah. 
No, I, I didn't. I didn't mean to leave uh, High C off that list. I meant to include him. But no, yeah, that's all good. good. I mean, that's all good. On that note, my last comment is: it was always the uh, the whole t- like when everybody was on a track. Those were always the best tracks, in my opinion. Like coming like this, y'all, and oh, yeah. all the ones were all y'all. Ooh, I love that those one too. Those were the best ones. So thank you. That's yes. right. Love y'all, man. Thank love you, you too, right, man. Brother. Appreciate it. Okay, let's keep it pushing. Damn, come in like this, y'all. That motherfucker. See, now, give him credit. Go ahead, caller. Yes. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Caller. Hey, don't be scared now. I hear you breathing. It's only deep voices. Come on. Caller. You can talk. Do it. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Shake that buzz off. Where are you talk calling from, us. caller? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Let's shake that buzz off. Yeah, Come on. Salute man. to Tony A. Salute to KK from Big Jim from the A. Hey, bro. Much love to you. Appreciate it. Um, couple questions. I've been a big fan since 91. Man. It's been an interesting conversation because I'm straight New York, Atlanta. Oh, so you, Coast, you so right on, you right you in guys. tune with it, brother, right? Am I, am I lying? To your no, knowledge? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, I've been a fan of all music since the '80s, so I never got in that uh, West Coast. East Coast uh, uh, beef uh, and me, I started me, writing from me, magazine. Me neither. I but just here, got to experience it from the inside out. Well, here, let me just let me ask you a few questions here. Um, the old stuff. You see, I'm a real second on fan, so I go back thank to you, tape one. You. And the first time I heard it, we were coming out of a high school function when I was a junior, and I heard it bumping out of somebody's CRX with the hatchback, and that shit was rocking. And I had to yes, ask him what yes. the hell that shit was, and I bought the tape the next day on cassette. Been my favorite ever since. And here's my thank analogy: you. I'm a hip hop kind of tour. Like I said, I'm East Atlanta. I've been to LA a couple times, Vegas about ten. So. um DJ premiered us as the guy out here on the East for the boom bap sound to me, <laughs> you know, you guys all like a Dre, but I'm a quick guy. So I always thought of your crew with Tony a and everybody as the real NWA. And that's what hit Thank me you. with the funniness. Cause I like the comedy sample. I met Rudy Ray Moore. I met Blowfly. There I'm we go. You, yes, sir. So you see how they infuse humor in real life situations. Let me, let me ask Tony on, and you KK. If you were, let, let me ask you if, if you guys agree with this. This is something I thought of, you know, just with my crazy music and smoking 15 swishers to the dome a day. So I need one right yeah, now. I got one uh, roll. Nah, nah, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we be getting that shit from Cali over here, you know. Plus, we got the New York. So hey, anyway. It's all good. Um, but uh, DJ Premier, I would say his best production work as a whole is the group home album, which many agree with. Now, I think as DJ Quick, he represents the West Coast sound. He's my DJ premiere for the West. So okay. his best production work together is the damn second and unself-titled album. There's, like Tony said, from front to back, zero skips. However, my more than a player starts it off perfect, but the two bangers are at the end. Punk uh, motherfuckers about your boy ooh. who died. I always wanted to know about thank that deep you, story. You, and if you ever think of him, because it's been 30 years, you know what I mean? Like yes, some sir. more insight on that. And then I always text Tony in the chat, tell us about the niggers tripping studio <laughs> session. Who was there? Because to me, that ends off the album. The whole album is just banging. It's got the whole crew, everybody, yes, with sir. scratching, everybody going crazy. Drunk off a of henny, like you said, or whatever you guys were smoking back then. <laughs> we, but that shit to me. <laughs> End so, so the point I'm making is, do you guys agree with agree with that? DJ Quick, it, it, the best production as a whole would be second and on self titled. DJ Premier is his group home album, and you got the two MCs over the best beats ever. And like you guys were saying, EPMD before, it's like Mob Deep, the two MCs with the different distinct voices over right. the best beats ever. So you got second and none. The best fucking rap group out the West, period. I don't care about these ice cubes, the Mount Rushmores. It's second to none and the, qu- and the quick crew. You know what I mean? Thank and you, If you brother. could ever get it together with that maniac or whoever's stopping the show, i pay 300 a ticket, <laughs> you know, 500 meet and greet, and i blaze y'all and we get it going. Well, it's cracking, brother. Uh, check out our Instagrams. Check out my Instagram at 
B L A K K A Z Z. Quick, you you nah, get we it. We we don't do no social media. Okay, we okay, but I, I'm gonna bring you. Can I bring you up to speed for the past year and a half? If because we're dealing with a digital generation and the mindsets and their perception with this digital platform, you know. The heads and eyeballs yeah, and souls yeah, are into phones. I bought Compton music. I bought Compton music in Thank 14 on, on regular disc for the collection. I'm a collector. Thank I got you, brother. I appreciate vinyl, Tony. I got to okay, sign some of that shit for you. Vinyls. Get in touch with Tony right. so I can sign some so, of that for you. Hell yeah. Huh? I said you get in touch with Tony so, and leave that information so I can sign some of that for you. Stuff so you got I for second or not. CD through some bootlegger. Back in November for my birthday, the dedicated CD, and they never sent it. So I've been trying to get you a copy with I, one I, of them. I, I'm the one that, uh, that's doing it. Me and this maker, so I don't know who the fuck got a bootleg. They probably bought a well, copy. They, I thought it was a bootleg. Hell no, nah, that's real but for I me. I need a real just, copy autograph for the trouble. Okay. Well, you got to go to... Uh, 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 <laughs> Through my Instagram, Black Ass KK, you can click on the... Uh, the link? The, yeah, the link at the I'll bottom. I'll figure it out. You know no, me. No, no, this, this is this is direct, bro. You're getting it from the source. Yeah, which a lot of people kind of mislead. That's what I'm saying. I You're getting get it from it the from source. But Pete, go ahead, bro. I'm listening. Tony A and KK, I'll start wrapping it up. But the very last thing is this: uh, the script, the do it video. Now that's <laughs> pure classic gold. I don't know. If okay, seen my son that. Boomer is right here. Boomer shot that, and we shot that years ago. Dude oh, is almost twenty Boomer something years shout old. Out to Boomer did it. I'm just not but releasing you need that stuff. Any old second than unsung, and that video is straight hood with you by the rim, and then the beat gets going, and then you just smile. Hey, thank now you, that's brother. Pure comedy, pure gangster, all that, wrapped into all one. that. And and I'm, I'm, and I'm in it. It. Thank you, brother, for the luck, because I'm in different hoods, Crip Bloods, Mexicans, and all of that, black and brown community. Yeah, and I'm interested in the West. Right. I'm not familiar with Oakland, like I said, but y'all, you know, through the music, and, and like I said, I grew up in New York, and it, it was I'm my about favorite to since school. I'm it. about to it school you, brother. Day. Second to none documentary, Black Ass KK. All good. Dedicated. Oh, shit, I'm, ba- I'm about to, I'm about I to bring the facts to the table. For thir- 33 years worth of facts. Tell the story about punk. Yeah, Trey, punk you got time going to the story about punk motherfuckers. Yeah. About your old boy Rest and peace. Tony. Tell us about the... Yeah. I'll give it to you ahead, real briefly ahead. about that, uh, punk motherfuckers. Rest in peace to Ronnie Bader. That was my cousin's husband, Pam. I mean, she might be listening, but her husband got caught up and he got killed by a smoker through some bullshit in the streets. But he was a ball. He was a player. He taught me and D. You know, he was on the red side as far as L.A. County concerned, but all the Crips loved him. He was a true hustler. Yeah. It's the late 80s. It's, uh, okay. And I have to say this for those from yeah, the West yeah. Coast. See, the Crips got to watch two Compton niggas called Second and None grow to be Second and None. Mm-hmm. Rolling 60s, East Coast, and the Hoovers. We from Compton. So all the Crips and the Mexican sets from North Angeles to Serenials to uh, Tijuana, all the way from Texas to Mexico, back to motherfucking to the Pacific Ocean, got to witness us become second to none. That's why we have a lot of love out here where the Northeast and the Southeast don't really understand. They still understand yeah, what yeah, Mexicans are. Sure. So it's a lot to exactly. learn about and I never our knew what culture. Second and none was right, right. But you see, I, I it, 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 we, we were with the, y'all OGs. Yeah, KRS One, S Clan, Brother J, and them. They, these are my homies, Chuck D, and them. Oh, Daddy yeah, else, yeah. that's a Sonic. Hell yeah. So with y'all, and we and were and y'all OGs. Yeah. Come on now. That's how, that just goes to show you how much that West is hated on. Same spot. Come on, bro. I love you. Yeah, I mean he's a legend. Love you, brother. I love you guys, man. Love I appreciate you too. it. And like I said, we'll get the CD going. And I appreciate the uh, the backstories. And Tony, uh, I never called in, but I'm a regular chat guy, and I love your show. I Thank appreciate you, it, bro. man. Thank, Thank you for all you do for everybody. Thank you. Stay blessed. Okay. Yes, Thanks, sir. guys. Peace out. The name of the song was Motherfuckers Tripping, right? No, Punk Motherfuckers. Okay, was, there, there was, was a a, Punk Motherfuckers. Okay, he goes, Punk Motherfuckers. Yeah, with the R, the E R Z, E R S. Oh, shit. Hold on, hold on. CB, <laughs> CB recognize his voice. Caller, your right. name and where you calling from? Speak up. Calling from LA, baby. Do you okay. recognize that? Name that LA voice. LA City or LA County? All I know is this. 
I really love the song Niggers Trippin'. Niggers you tripping. niggas got on there and did well, well, we, we got a remix called Honky Stripping too. Now yeah, I don't know if you heard that one. Oh man. Shit. That's Listen, just, that's the shit. He caught what I caught. I I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you, guys you brother. Such a great job. Second one, two, none. <laughs> I can't beat the name. That's second twelve, none. I don't know where you got that. <laughs> Have you recognized that voice? Not yet. I'm a I kid. love KK. Nigga, this AMG, baby. What's up, y'all? Y'all doing See, good? See, you got here, you, you got auto tune on your shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fuck yeah, out of here, right. nigga. Come on, Spin. Get that auto tune off your shit, man. I think it's you got an iPhone, an Ignite phone. No, I'm an Android, nigga. KK Kermit, yeah. like fuck. I'm yeah. gonna like that auto tune on here. Man, love you, bro. What's, What's happening? Up with you, nigga? Man, chilling out here, I love it, man. spreading love. I, li- I like how you, I like you, how you doing the work. Yeah, you spreading the love, man. You damn Much right. How, how I was supposed I to be. To, I wanted to call in. I called, I called five fucking times. Man, so you you see what I'm doing, G? Right? Wake, wake I'm, every, I'm, I'm gonna wake the West and the East Coast up at the same fucking time with facts because it came. We we came before all the shit y'all think y'all know. And appreciate. I'm, I'm well, talking to know, fans and consumers. Know. Wikipedia but, only goes back so far. We're, right. we're free Google, so you gotta understand. They don't know. But you know. Th- somebody gotta say something. Shit. Somebody gotta. Somebody say gotta say something. Please. Instead of talking about Beyond, please Balenciaga say, say and it. shit. All this shit. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they, they Whoever just, they, they name just is. doing their thing, man. Yeah, K Swiss. But yo, I just want to give a shout, man. <laughs> what up, Tony? What up, my brother? Um. Uh, thanks to all the fans listening, and y'all listen to KK because he ain't gonna tell you no bullshit. Thank you, bro. And, that, and that's it. All good, G. You gotta let me know Go next time you're in town, brother. Yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah, I'll let you know. It's gonna be a minute. Can but I-, I love what y'all doing, man. It's looking good too. Y'all looking good. It's sounding better. All thank, right. Thank, thank you, my you, brother. Man, love you, bro. Stay blessed, G. Soon, soon. Worldwide, AMG signing off. Yes, sir. Worldwide. Yes, you didn't recognize the auto tone, huh? Auto tone on that voice, man. It's like word to the D, y'all. Word Call to her. the motherfucking G, y'all. Your name or where are you calling from? Oh, good night, everybody. This is uh, another shameless plug. Miguelito's tattoos on Instagram. <laughs> Go ahead, my brother. At least she was honest. <laughs> yeah, at least he was honest. <laughs> Go ahead, my bro. All right, I I have a question for you, Tony, and another one for you, KK. Okay. But first, I have a question for Tony first, though. First. I'm not a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Go okay, ahead, bro. I guess I'm going to have to skip the question now. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. well, he's not your puppet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not your puppet. So. You'd be sitting in the park. <laughs> right, I'm not sitting in the park, and I don't have a curl. So. Right, so leave it alone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here it goes. Here it goes. Tony, I was going to ask you if you think Quake is going to call in today. I don't know. The number's up. I mean, anybody <laughs> can call. So, yeah. That answers your question. That answers your question. What's KK's question? All right. And KK. All yes. right, KK's question, man. Yes, sir. Hey, man, it's, it's, it's nice to meet you. It's pleasure, really pleasure nice hearing your man. voice, I bro. I appreciate it. I hear that you're a legend, and it's good. It's good to hear all these people, but I have one serious question for you, man. Yes, sir. And I want you to tell me straight up. Got to. All right? Are you down to bust a freestyle right now? Am Rolling I down radio. to bust a freestyle right now? What are you talking about? You frowning or you trying to smile? Tell me something. Are you thinking about something or nothing? Which way are you running? From yourself, or do you be true to yourself? If you want to let the rhythm take you, get on yourself. Is that freestyle enough for you? While I'm on the Tony Ye Rodeo Radio, letting you know about the flow. And fuck a freestyle, this is how the tutu will go. Yeah, I'm Black Ass KK, get my album. It's called Dedicated for Show, produced by Boomer, did it. One track by Quick, now go get it. How did I spit it, nigga? Tell you the truth in your face on the ear and I'm live to you. Is that good enough for you? Damn. Damn. Fuck, fuck a freestyle. Yeah. But is that good enough? Did that work? 
So yes, so so you, so, yeah. so where would that put me? Well, where would that put me at freestyle for thirty three years? Nobody that, you, that ever, you don't know about. Nobody's ever well, freestyled well, here except you. Yeah, but look at look at well, your I, look, look at your MTV KK, raps. To me. I'm listening, brother. KK, everybody in the live chat is throwing flames. So <laughs> I mean, that pretty much speaks for itself, man. So say you say it again, like I, I couldn't hear you clearly, bro. Everybody was throwing flames. Everybody throwing flames. I, I guess that means everybody fire. Everybody throwing flames right now on the but, live but, chat. But, but hell ain't got yeah, shit to do with that flame. <laughs> Heaven, yeah. Why are they throwing flames? Because it's fire to them, and I appreciate all be, that love. What should they be throwing? Maybe it's dope. What, what do you want them to throw? What I want you to throw? I don't want you to do anything. Just be yourself and whatever you feel in this side. Be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. And only if you want it, you can let the rhythm take you anytime. Yes. And I didn't mean to turn you on, and we can walk hand in hand together. <laughs> you know, and stay dedicated, brother. Yeah. Go pick it up. Yes. Stay safe and sound. All the time. <laughs> all the way. When I drink, I fill my cup up all yeah. the way. All yeah. good, my bro. Make sure you don't keep that booty up. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. All right, all my right, bro. I love you, bro. All good. All right, man. Nice to meet you, man. All good, my bro. Punk motherfuckers. That's, that dude said punk motherfuckers. Niggas be tripping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he said, bro. I caught that. Nigga was tripping. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Oh, shit. Hold on one second. Oh, shit. Man, what, make sure you use toilet paper. Oh, shit. Hey, what's up, bro? What's up, my brother? It's from Oceanside, California. What's happening? Oceanside in the building. What's good, my brother? Man, around hey, man, that curve on that 405 out. South, around you know, that. Camp Pendleton. What's happening with you? <laughs> Hey, what's up, man? Military, hey, military, you know, yeah. Tony, yeah. Yes, sir. Military, no, man, bro, Ray, we got more than military out here. Huh? I know, you got that beach uh, and that, that, that <laughs> cool lifestyle on the side. Yeah, I that's freak, right. I but, freak but with KK, that. KK, check it, though. Tony, yeah, and KK, I want to make a statement, then I got a question. Yeah. 1990, I'm in junior high school, 12, 13 years old. You guys changed me and a lot of my homies' childhood life, man. That, that first album, that second and third album, that Underground Master of Terror, that, that's my joint right there. Oh, thank that's, you. Underground Arsenal of Terror. Yes. Oh, my goodness. You have an underground... That's, that's, that's the track right there. Thanks to now, the Wise had, Prophets. Two, there was two versions of that, though. It was a quick version and it was well, your that's version. That's called the Underground Tape, which would be the Red Tape, the first version. Yes. And right, see, right. I didn't. I didn't get that till later, though. Hey, anyway, bro. But hey, the underground man. massacre of terror. We was belling in junior. Hey, we was belling in junior high school, bumping the hell out of that shit. Thank man. you, man. That Appreciate that cool. love. Tony A, the wizard. Yes, sir. Tony A, the wizard of high C. That album is a classic, and you, man, that that album cover to this day is one of the hardest album covers ever. The laid back you know like that. Thank you, my bro. Yeah, but my my thing is. But what, what I really want to say is back in those days, it was only tapes. I don't remember getting a CD. My first CD was the Niggas for, for, Niggas for Life album. And that was when they came out with those long CD covers. Yeah. You remember that? Yes. No, it was 91. Yeah, the long oh, box. 91 was my first CD. Oh, no. The yeah. long box. Yeah, I still got mine. It was all tapes box. back then. Yeah. I, I, I it, it was all tapes back then. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. But um, what I was going to say was... uh. Damn, now I lost my train of thought. I'm over here. All good. I'm, take I'm, your time. You know, I'm starstruck. I gotta, I, I'm starstruck. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I'm going on 45. I'm talking to people. You know, I'm talking to two brothers right here that I grew up on. Thank you. Know, you, man. I, you know, I idolize to a appreciate, certain degree. You know what like, I mean? so, don't I'm, idolize it, man. We appreciate uh, each other. My man. thing is this. My thing is this. You guys were a, a tight click. It was KK, second to none, high C, Tony A, DJ Quick, AMG. What, my question is, what happened? How come it did not? You know, turn over to the and keep going for for de for a decade. It seemed like it was like I don't want to say short lived, but it was like 1990 to 92. I remember the I remember the you guys had some features on a uh, uh, way too funky, which was was that which had you know that that bullshit that was hard all the way from the hood one chopping nigga up to no good. Yeah, that's no like, bullshit. My back because like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's right. Pay attention to the lyrics. But that's, I'm just that's wondering what happened. I, I mean, I'm not I'm not in the music business. And I'm not going to speak for the music business. You guys can speak to it way better than I can, but I can speculate. You want to say something first, Tony? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. really happened? I, I, I'll speak my on my end. Right, right, okay, right. On my end, when when it came 
uh, for the High Seas second album. I, I know I'm just going to be honest with you, and I can say this in front of Crawford because I love Crawford, okay? But when I say Crawford, I'm talking about High C. Um, he wanted to mm-hmm. produce his second album himself. He just wanted to produce it. So I was kind of left on the outskirts, still signed to the label. They're giving me projects. I was doing Queen remixes, and I was doing other remixes, and they were paying me. But my whole thing was I wanted to produce High C. So What's- what... So what happened right. was this. I, I think they gave him like $240,000 and he had spent it all doing the record. And I think they only liked like six songs. So Rachel Matthews, who was the A&R at that time at Disney, contacts me and she tells me, I need six tracks from you. And I did them. I got 60K. I actually even sold my writers. I didn't want, because I didn't think that album was going to go anywhere. And I'm going to tell you why, Kay. I said I didn't think it was going to go anywhere because the chemistry was not there no more. Yeah, I feel you. So I just figured I'm gonna do the yeah, six, thing- six, do the six tracks and then step uh-huh. aside, and that's why I think our careers were short lived as far as high seeing Tony Eight. Right, I got so, you. So that that's my answer. Well, I, I, I'm trying to, I, yeah, you know, and I understand that part, but my thing is, you guys were a collective, the, the, I mean, the crew. That's what you were speaking on. It was a crew, but do you like, have to individualize? You, know, before, you gotta understand experience. for anybody that's not like kind of anybody that's not. You know, you guys' age, my age, or even, you know, a little tad bit younger. It was nothing but the NWA from 88 to 90, Ice Cube left 91. at 90. 91. You know what I'm saying? And then and then next thing you know, it's my generation. It's, I, it's We bell into DJ Quick. Segment 9, you know, AMG, I it, High yeah. Segment Tony nine. A. We bell, like I said, we bump into the Quick groups down the street at 13 years old. Spice yeah, you know, MK was out there too, but he didn't have a click. It was only him and him and uh, okay. him and Chill. And as, far as, as far as clicks, but was you guys more had a click. Yeah, you I guys had you. a big click that could have kind of like and then us. transcend. That and I'm be just our wondering, like, and, and then it, right, and then '92 came United out, the came soldiers. out, and it was like that was a click. United Soldiers. So, you know, with Dre and them. Yeah, yeah, let's coin this after NWA. The next click from the West was us. United Soldiers. That's right. DJ that Quick Second and that Nine. DJ Tony A. I. C. and though. AMG. Sugar Free and Mossberg right. wasn't in the and play they, yet. No, but no. that's too. Uh, no, 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 no. That, that's too late. Too, that's too that's late. Too, yeah, that's but, too late. but the I'm original about... click, the five members or the six members, the six member right. of WA. <laughs> The, that's what I'm talking about, man. No, you guys no, were the first no, real, real no click in the rap game. <laughs> nowhere accessible to the media, <laughs> to the masses. Right. Except for the political group you know, in WA. Right, right, man. You know what? We, I don't want to be too long. I just want to give, give shout outs and love to y'all. Thank you. Tony A, man. Appreciate you be it, scratching, you, you, was the, you was the man scratching your ass off, man. Thank you, you my brother. Like I said, you was right. everybody wanted to know who that Mexican nigga was scratching his ass off on High Seas album back Tony in the day. Watch and this. It was you. Watch this. You know Tony A, you know Julio G. I can't G. believe I'm talking to you. Tony G. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate <laughs> yeah, you, homie. I can't believe I am. I, like I, said, I can't believe I'm talking to this guy right here. All good, hey, my hey, brother. love, man. I'm going to be peeping out your new stuff. Thank you. I appreciate it. Dedicated second to none.com. That's right. Thank you, my bro. All right, let's keep it pushing. We're probably going to do about two more phone calls, and then I want to get into his album. Okay. Appreciate it. Call it your name or where are you calling from? I like it. It's this Derek shit. Mallory calling from <laughs> Minneapolis. Derek Mallory What's calling from Minneapolis. What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? Twin Cities. I'm all right. What's up, KK? Hey, man. Blessed to be here, brother. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yes, sir. So, uh, what's it like to be on MC Hammer's music video, Too Legit to Quit? Oh, the million dollar video with James Brown in it, CNC Music Factory, Freedom Williams, uh, Bootsy Collins, DJ Quick. The representation of Compton. Easy E, when he was alive, DJ Quick is second to none. That speaks for itself. Yeah. What, MC Hammer video, West Coast? Yeah. With James Brown in the video, Bootsy Collins, Brown. Freedom from CNC Music Factory, yeah. and the representation of Compton, Easy E, Quick KK and D, or KKD makes up second and none. Yeah. So Easy E, Quick, and second and none is the representation of Compton and MC Hammer's million dollar video. Million dollar with James video. Brown and all these legends in the Bootsy. Yeah, come on, and and the representation for Compton at that time in MC Hammer video. Yeah, too legit to quit. You can go look it up. 
Because yeah. we was doing shows and hit towards the hammer. But uh, for that right there, for MC Hammer, with his power and all his glory at his time, at his height, a million dollar video, the representation for Compton is who? Easy E when he was still alive, DJ Quick, KK and D from second and none. So that speaks for Compton. All good. Derek, what's good, bro? You had another question? Yeah, Tony. Um, how come you wasn't in that video? I wasn't there. You bro. in high seat. No, I wasn't there, bro. Actually, me and Crawford, we did a lot of shows oh. on our on our own because we, well, we that, had a different agency. Can I help a little go bit? For it, yeah, go for but, it. Yeah, but well, MC Hammer personally, because he was a fan of Second and None as well. Yeah. yeah, he invited us Second and None. Yeah. So you know, what I mean, because we were doing more shows with MC Hammer. Yeah. In the Bay Area, especially in the Midwest, but the Bay Area. Right. And, and that's well, well, the connection with MC Hammer second to none. One thing that's it. different with today's shows is that back then we had agencies that were right, fine. That right. Was, today that ICM, doesn't even exist. Yeah. Yeah. Today it, that doesn't exist. No, nah, it's called uh, uh play for pay? Man. You gotta pay promoters pay, to perform. Uh, you know, man. I got a song on my dedicated album called Take It No More. I talk about promoters for a quick second. All good. All good. All, all good, Derek. Is Appreciate that, that love, bro. Is yeah, that um, y'all was yeah, was it like to do um KML Summer Jam twice? Mm. Twice. That's what you know. It's more than twice. Yeah. Yep. That's what I'm saying. It's it's a, it's a it's an era in the life before Death Row and Bad Boy. Me and Crawford, me and Crawford did a KML uh, uh function like that, and it was fucking huge. Jody, she was there. Uh, TLC. I met. That was the only time that I ever met Lisa Left Eye. Man, LA don't get the shows like that. It really never did. That only happened in the forum. But it's so many shows and big legends, two day concerts. LA don't get that because it's what I try to instill in the LA culture and community. Yeah. Y'all gotta act right to get this good shit that no, the Midwest and the Southeast get. Too many fo- motherfuckers are getting killed out here, man. Yeah, like, and it's like, think- come on, it's it's violence everywhere. But yeah. Calm down, LA. Y'all yeah. want y'all want so much shit, but calm the fuck down and you'll get it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All good, Derek. Thank you, bro, my bro. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for taking your time. All right, man. Stay blessed. Thanks homie. for shouting me out. Oh yeah. I had to. Hey, thanks for shouting me out yesterday. I had to, my bro. Yep. Okay. Gracias, Canal. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Like I'll give him a shout out on uh, Dr. Green Thumb on uh uh B Real. Shout out B Real. Yeah, absolutely. I got uh I talked to you. I just got a promoter hit me. Okay. Spice One, Be Real, and Second to None. We're trying to put something together. Okay. My folks from Detroit to via Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. That just came today, so I'm letting you know. I, yeah. I already got in touch with Spice. Call her your name or where are you calling from? I, I have Spice here. Yeah. I got What's Spice. What's up, Tony? Right. This is Evan. What's up, my bro? Oh, hey, it's Evan Flample. Yeah. What's good, my bro? You got a question? I got a. Yes, sir. Uh, question for KK. Yes, uh, sir. KK, man. Hey. Bro, uh, I appreciate you, you, bro. Guys, uh, I think, yeah, I saw you guys like three times over summer. You signed my couple of my LPs. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank you. My question for you, um, I'm real big on like uh, looking for like unreleased material. And I know <laughs> there's that unreleased uh, <laughs> yeah. second to none album. Which, it's, it's a few of them. Which is fucking amazing. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm just one, uh, coming one, this year. The one I know of is the, the shit. Okay, that whole album. We um, were ne- we were never signed to Death Row. And this is for all the listeners on Rhodium Radio with Tony A. We were never signed to Death Row. Second to none, we're never signed to Death Row. We only did good business with good music with Jimmy Iveen yeah. of Interscope Records said damn those brothers do good work I like how they write and how they do it yeah sure get can you holler at them for me so that was the intertwining with death row and people getting it confused hey second to none ain't on death row and never been we were here before death row yeah so Jimmy Iveen, as y'all are familiar with that name now, yeah. twenty years later, uh, he was in, in uh, you know, in wow, second, to, second to none. Fuck, sure, could, 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 get, get this guys. 
Right. Which turned into 1994 above the rim soundtrack number five. The song didn't mean to turn you on. Well, the shit album, that's what didn't mean to turn you on came off of. We already had that done. Right. Uh, the business deal didn't work out with uh, Interscope Records, not Death Row, Interscope Records with Jimmy Iovine and Ted Fields. Yeah. Meetings with them. Never signed. Should, if it, When Tupac came to death row, and I want everybody to go back and look at that two-page spread out with Tupac at the top of the so-called pyramid with the black background and, and all of that. Right. Look at the bottom. It says consultation, second to none. That means consulting. Hey, because... You know more than me, and I appreciate your knowledge and skill and talent, which a lot of motherfuckers on the West Coast don't do. Appreciate somebody that came before them that might have the knowledge and skill and actually went through the shit when you didn't to listen to what the fuck they got to say. That's communications. That's what the West Coast is like. And I'll say that. But thanks and blessings, that's how... Doing a business deal with Jimmy Iovine. And some of you motherfuckers don't know who the fuck Ted Fields is. That's how Tony A can speak on Disney, Hollywood Records. And I can speak on before Tupac and Death Row with Jimmy Iovine and Ted Fields. Motherfucker Stephen Segal in the scope. But you motherfuckers don't know shit. Yeah. yeah, I think you know everything. We came before Death Row and Bad Boy. I knew Puffy when Father MC we was on tour with Father MC. Go look on YouTube. Because uh, what's her name? Jaguar Rice, she telling all the shit. But we was there in 1990, so fuck what you talking about. Yeah. Yeah, second to none, baby. KK, black ass. Dedicated to out, second to none.com. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my bro. Got to let you go. We got to take one more it. phone call, homie. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, We're going to take one more phone call, and that's it. I got to get to the, the titles of his uh, songs on his album. So we got to do that. So who's going to be the last lucky caller? Whoever calls is going to get a free uh, um uh, a free pair of socks from KK. So, let me see. T-shirt. Yes. Call her your name and where are you calling from? S- feet sweat. Hello. Hello. Hey, la- first lady. Oh God, Tony. Go ahead. First lady. Hello. The first lady. How you doing? How your you name doing? and where are you calling from? How you doing? I'm Big Bear Boy from Wilmington. Oh yeah. Cool. How you guys doing, fellas? Uh, we're doing nice. Yeah. How you guys are talking about East Coast and West Coast? Oh, yeah. Does KKK know about Northerners? Northerners? Yes, baby. Northerners? I know what they're known for, right? Repeat that, baby. Come on. Yeah. Tell me more about it. You want to know know. about Northerners? They like to stag. They like to have their pants down. Oh, Northern, Northern California, Nathaniel's, or you you're talking North Kenya, Canada, Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon, Eugene, Oregon, Sacramento. What North of LA are you talking about? Be specific, baby. Come on. I oh, love I it. love your voice. Oh, oh my yeah. God. I, oh, come on. Oh, yeah, baby. Give it to me. I can't stop. Stop I it, baby. Oh, yeah. It's like a laxative just running through you. Come on. Give it to me. Brown love, oh, yeah. brown love, liquid brown love running through you all night. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Ah, I oh. love brown boy. Brown boy, brown boy putting it down. Yes, put it down. Yeah, all in you, baby. Yeah, you're definitely a northerner. You ain't no, no East Coast, West Coast boy. <laughs> no, this West Coast County, baby, <laughs> Wilmington in the house. No northerner, I can tell by that voice. What? Come on, baby. It's Rosecrans, Wilmington. What's good? Uh, you have a question or you're good? I just, oh my God, I can't talk no more. I got to hang up. Uh-huh. It's Moises. Damn, it's called Moises. <laughs> she was flicking her bean. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. I love the moment. She was thumping that bean. Oh, girl. FM Tony A Radio. Yes. Rodium Radio Live for your thighs. Call her your name and where are you calling from? In between is the surprise. Don Perruco. <laughs> Perruco, you're the last caller, so let's make it good, carnal. Okay, uh, I had a question for KK. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, do you think that music can still be saved? Yes, indeed. Or rap, I'm sorry, rap, you know, do you think rap can still be saved? Yes, indeed. Hip hop might have a problem, but rap can be saved. 
And what do you, I, I mean, I don't know if somebody asked you this, but what do you think about the, the new rap era? I don't think about it. I listen to it. I adjust and I acknowledge it. And I appreciate the talent that comes in between those streams and memes. And uh, he has talent. She doesn't. She has talent. He doesn't. Okay. That's it. That's, it's, you know, okay, good now, music. Now, 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 now I'm going to ask another question. I mean, you don't have to answer it if you don't feel comfortable. No, I'm going to answer the shit. Who do you think? All right. Who do you think uh, has got what it takes right now? Nobody. Like, like which rap? Nobody. Person? Like, right now? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> No, you gotta yeah. do it like Keith Sweat. Okay, I'm, uh, nobody. Let me put it in my goat. Let me put it. Let me put it in the sheep. Baby making. Oh no, no. Let me put it in the Woo. sheep voice. Nobody. <laughs> Don't let me play that song tonight. I Come might on, make, nobody. Uh, I might make you might make a body. Uh, oh, I don't know what I'm to watch. I'll make triplets tonight. Oh yeah. <laughs> Auto tune in your <laughs> motherfucking face. Ah! <laughs> West side, baby. East side, Compton. Oh, shit. Don Perruco. Hey. Yes. Don hey, Perruco. Give him a devil. All right, so, uh, so your answer is nobody? Uh, you know, I can say, with all due respect to this generation, and it's three generations past when we came out. I have to give respect to those from the southeast, northeast, northeast. Bobby Smurder kicked it off. Yeah. Then uh, you know, you had the followers after Bobby Smurder, which was a young MA, young Ma, whatever the case. Yeah. But everybody jumped off Bobby Smurder. You have to give yeah. uh, what's his name? The one that got Rihanna. ASAP Rocky, because it's a lot of ASAPs after Rocky. Right, right. ASAP right. Ferg and the rest of them. So it's an appreciation to seeing him and being in the embodiment of New York and that culture in that 2000s way, the bike, bicycle riders, like on the West Coast. We need all the beach cruisers out here where you see the black and brown community right. riding on the beach together on the streets, up right. and down maybe Wilmington or Rosecrans or Imperial or El Segundo or Century. Right. Yeah, you know, to the beach, West Coast shit, all of us together. All good, Don Peruco, you good? Yeah, I'm good. I was just uh, trying to get that out of the way. All right, appreciate uh, answering the phone, Tony and uh, KK. Thank you, giving bro. you your flowers. I hope. Uh, thank you, man. I, I hope I answered know, everything. You shit, but shit. I'm gonna give you my respect. How about that? You know, because flowers sounds a little weird, but you know, fuck it. It's what it is. All right, have a good night, everybody. Uh, thank you, bro. You too, my bro. All right, that was, that was the last call. Okay, so now we're going to jump into um, your album. We can take these off now, KK. All right, bro. Okay, so your album's called Dedicated. Yes, sir. Okay, now let's go through. If these are interludes or, or their tracks, let us know. Track number one on this dedicated album is called Dedicated. Yes, sir. Uh, you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Okay, well, just uh, being picking that song and the title after hearing the beat because it's yeah. the music first right so a lot of people got lost that it's the music first when i heard the music boomer did the production my son boomer boomer did it <coughs> i heard the track so it took me just hearing it i'm like damn this sound like some west coast feeling shit yeah yeah feel good music okay all right damn I'm under the Cali sun. No sweat, black ball head, second to none. Ladies come get wet at a beach or to a private pool. Hit the hood with water guns of me. KK, you a fool. Not too much, but enough to make you blush. I know the good weed off the food off the grill. Weed and drinks is a rush. I'm not the type to do too much. Living it low like a hush. Pushing the state of the plus. Praying, planning to bubble the credit up with passport and hands. Traveling across the waters and lands. Then back home again. Tipping the friends to international trends. Old and new world blends. I know you liking my style. I see it in your grin. That's my motivation for me to win. KK getting it in. Now some things tend to bend around corners to California. That's why. I stay dedicated for the fans and my peers. Everybody over the years, you know I've been dedicated. That's why I'm so fly. I stay dedicated. 
family, homies, girls around the world is being dedicated. Hell yeah. That's Give right. A round of applause, you guys. Produced by Boomer Diddy. Yes. Second track, hands on. Hands on. Self explanatory. Okay. After being 32, 33 years now in this motherfucking so called entertainment or uh, rap business, or uh, right. not hip hop, but entertainment business, music business. Yeah. Uh, I learned to be from seeing shit that people look up on Google and YouTube. I was there. Y'all yeah. motherfuckers getting a third. <laughs> uh, experience. Yeah. So it's I like was a there, information. and you don't believe that we were there. Right. Fuck y'all, but uh, haters and non-believers. But okay. that's what hands on. Okay, third track, on and on, featuring Nate Rue and Boomer did it. All right, featuring my son Boomer did the tracks. Okay, the homie Nate Rue is a homie I met. He had the heart. How he met? How we met? He was trying to do music. Been around since like 2009. Yeah. That's the homeboy from Inglewood. Okay. He got his, he got his own shit. Check him out. BossNayRue.com or whatever. B-O-S-S-N-E-H-R-U. Uh, check him out. He got singles and songs cracking. Boomer did uh, the production on his group's Boss Click first album. Okay. So 2014. On, on and on. What, what, what is that talking about? On and on is just how life carries on and on and every day and living moment that you experience in life. Life goes on and on and appreciate the moments in life and consider how life goes on and on. And it goes on from the night to the morning, from the morning to the right. night. And it carries on awesome. as long as you're breathing. Okay. Then we got Love It featuring Nehru. What is Love It about? Track, All track right. Number love four. It is a party track and the ladies. I love it. Just one of them Club Cali nights. I'm up in the spot and everything's seeming all right. It's a cool Club Threes. I got a little trees tucked tight without a moment to think. Brown drink, low ice, KK trying to make a way out of nothing turn into something like me and this girl straight sweating and fucking. After an episode, I can recock this mother, dump another low, but look. Let me hold your mind for a minute Just to reach no preach I'm real with it Young looking but old school Black ass Compton authentic Peep heart soul to smash Girl no gimmicks Here for the good times Hard grinding when it's me time But right now I'm fucking with you You got some money Enough for you to know I told her sit tight But I think I ought to let it go Cause it's more ladies And I love it <laughs> West Coast I love it I love it I love, I love it. it We okay, love it The next one is called the, I think of it Yays and Groups this is the only track on my first solo album in 32 years of fans and appreciation from around the world, not uh, the United States, right. around the world. When you going to do your own album? Because if people remember on Second Nun's first album, I got my own solo project. Yeah. So, no, no, own solo song on Second Nun's album. Yeah. And a lot of features on Quick's album was just me yeah. and Quick. I'm, uh, you know, I've been a solo artist. So I just didn't want to taint and seem selfish with putting a KK album out while Second to None is still growing. Yeah, yeah. And throw okay. away from Second to None. Was a, it's not about KK. It's Second to None. Right. Right. Okay, this one know. features uh, Quick and Sugar Free. Right. Quick, this is after my, my album was totally done, produced by Boomer. Nine songs. I let Quick hear my album one night. He called me in for a session. Man, I need, I, I hear your voice on some shit, K. So I went to the studio, did the work for him, and I said, he's like, man, what you been doing? Well, I finished my album. You finished your album? I said, yeah. Boom, yeah. My son produced the whole album. I got nine songs. It's done. Look at the album cover. It's already done. The credits and everything. Nigga, how you going to do it? An album don't even have no beat by me on it. This DJ Quick talking. So I'm like, well, fuck it. Man, what you, you know? Man, here go a song I was doing for my album. And that's called number five of my album, Yays and Grooves, featuring Sugar Free uh, and DJ Quick. Black Ass Cake album called Dedicated on uh, number five. But um, Quick heard my album. And, and, and it's funny too uh, The first song Which is the title of my album Dedicated Yeah I only played that one song It's first song on my album Croft was on the phone mm. During that time When him and Quick was talking Now you know That nigga ran to the studio You hear me Croft He ran to the studio After hearing This what the fuck KK doing He ain't tell D Quick Hi Tony A And nobody else <laughs> Him and Boomer Got together and put his first solo album out. The quick was like, how the fuck you gonna do an album? They ain't got no beat by me on it. 
I ain't got no Tony A beat. I ain't got no high C verse. I ain't got nobody's verse. No quick or sugar free or no D. No, this is black ass KK. And I've been black ass KK since 91. Y'all don't know that. My sister gave me that name. But yeah, okay. if you listen to the records, what West Coast people don't do, they don't pay attention. But uh, yeas and grooves, okay. that's how Sugar Free Quick and that number five, hearing my album, like, you got to have me on there. So that's how I got quick to put a, a song, a beat that he did. Yeah. Yeas and grooves, number five, Streets and Sugar Free, dedicated to the album Black Eyes KK. Uh, that's how Quick's okay. beat and Sugar Free and Quick got on my album. All good. Track, that's track number five, you guys. Track number five. So, yeah, he's a so track number six is all in together. All in together now. Got to make it better. How? Don't switch up the style. Keep it west because that's where it's at. Check facts. All in together now. All in together now. Got to make it better. How? Don't switch up the style. Keep it black because that's where it's at. Check facts. All in together now. That's number six, produced by Boomer Diddy. Boomer Dedicated Diddy. Album. Uh, track number seven, Take No More. I couldn't take no more. I'm going to be honest with y'all. That song, like 20 years old, I've been sitting on it. I couldn't take no more 20, 23 years ago. So I wrote that song. Can you still take it I now? Felt. I can't take it no more, even more. That's the remix. Even more. <laughs> yeah, but y'all just getting hip to take it no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't take it even more. Okay. <laughs> Uh, track number eight, Headphones. When you're getting away from the world, you got to let the world go by you someday and just sit back and tune into you and focus into your negatives and your positives. Balance that shit out and figure out who the fuck you are, what you're doing, balance yourself out. You have a better day, better afternoon, and better evening before you go to sleep. So you don't take no bullshit to sleep with you and wake up on some bullshit. Yeah. You wake up with a fresh start and balanced. Yeah, if you wake up on some bullshit, Can't lay your ass no back more. down. Uh, well, I have to say this Taking them more Is a little more industry too uh, okay. I'm speaking to promoters Booking agents And fake ass motherfuckers over I can't take it no more Radio people Radio stations Playlists And all that That's what taking no more about Okay Okay uh, But we were on headphones But it's okay that was head, headphones? Well, headphones, same shit, taking same them all. They're they in the same lane. I can't take them all, so I put my headphones on. There you go. There you go. Uh, track number nine, So Compton. It speaks for a goddamn self. And So Compton, is, this is the remix of my album, but on DJ Quick's yeah. album that I got, I'm on four times. It's called The Book of David. Released, what, 2011, 12? I'm not sure the year. Yeah. Right after him, a Corrupt's album. Yeah. Where they even have a song, Quick and Corrupt, dissing Second and Nine Free and AMG. But uh, we ain't going, we'll say that for later. Okay. But uh, right after that, the Book of David for DJ Quick album got done. Why am I on fucking four songs? I even have a song, which is so Compton, on DJ Quick's album by my goddamn self, produced by Quick. That's a more jazzy version of Soul Compton. So on my album, my first solo album in 32, 33 fucking years, I did my version of Soul Compton and Boomer did. That'll work. The gangster version, Hell street yeah. street version. Track number it's 10, to, to, to end it, it's uh, The Ways, Second to None. Damn right. It's the ways. These are the nights and days and the lifestyles and the ways. Learn the code of California yeah. that go for the United States and everybody that interested in blood and crip and Nathaniel Serrano, yeah. the Tongan and Samoan culture that don't know shit about it. Yeah. Past Texas, grow the fuck up. So I'm giving you a code of California. This ain't no goddamn. California No this is a facts Motherfucker Not no Hollywood ass Fantasy Fashion show Trying to tell you And get you to wave your hands Fuck all that I'm gonna look at you In your eyeballs On your corner In your hood Mexican or black Samoan or Tongan And tell you the facts right. Now it's up to you If you believe this shit Or not I'm standing in the frame While the rest of these niggas dead So Fuck what you talking about and fuck your gang banging, whatever black, brown, white hoods you from. Because we came before that shit. Yeah. Wake the fuck up, West Coast. Get back in there enjoying feel good music. Because that's what the fuck West Coast brought to the table. Yeah. Outside of political specific rap, which NWA did. DJ Quick and AMG and High C and Tony A. 
Second now we brought feel good music. Yeah. Hey, we all go through bullshit, but at the end of that, let's have a let's have some fun. That's like, right. Let's like Boomer did said it. Put down your guns. It's in our like two thousand. It's all it's killing. In the nineties, everybody had guns and shit. Yeah. Across the United States. But how many people got killed? Yeah. Through right. entertainment. So fuck your gang and fuck this entertainment gang. Wake the fuck up, grow up, put down your guns. Let's have some fun. Cause the West Coast brought the party to the table as far as entertainment, That's right. rap and hip hop, however you want to classify. Right. We brought the party to the game. Puffy to the next level, but we brought the party and calm your ass down, sit your ass down, enjoy the fucking music and the party. Look at some eggs and ass and titties. Sit your ass down, bitches. Look at dick prints and the sweats and Levi's and khakis. Sit your ass down and enjoy life. That's right. Okay. Um, so where is your music on all platforms right now? All fucking platforms. Okay. Dedicated. B L capital B. Lowercase L, yes. lowercase A, okay. capital K, capital K, lowercase A, Z Z K K, black ass K K, dedicated with two K's in the middle. Any hard copies in case anybody wants to buy it? All I have to do is go to my IG, you know, this digital platform, social media right. era of mentality. Go to my IG, which is called Instagram. Wow. Uh, and at the bottom of my bio, it says PY dot something. Yeah, it, you can read it yourself. You have eyeballs and eardrums. You can read it and hear it. Use your brains. Uh, and so, if you're intact it and, and put it with your brain, it'll work. Okay, That'll read work. that at the bottom of my on my black ass Instagram, B L A K K A Z Z K K Instagram, IG, and all that shit. At the bottom of my bio, click on a P Y dot something. Yeah, PayPal, motherfuckers, okay. to get your hard copy dedicated CD. Okay. Second to none dot hats, com. The hats, the shirts. All that. Second two N D I I N O N E right. dot C O M E. All good. At this, at this time, uh K, any shout outs you want to give so that we can end this interview? I want to give out the shout out to all the humans in this motherfucking planet. Wake the fuck up. It's West Coast Love, DJ Tony A, 1980s to the fucking now. That's right. We still in alive. And uh, no disrespect to hip hop in New York and East Coast. In the Southeast, is Georgia, the state. Right. I want to make that clear and get some clarity on that. Ain't no fucking hate or disrespect to none of y'all. Hip hop, New York or Georgia, Southeast, Northeast. Right. No hatred. Right. So I ain't finna give nobody no excuse to say, he did, you a motherfucking lie. Ain't no hating. Ain't none of that shit. Let me look at y'all goddamn face, New York and the Georgia. Because we were told in 1990, hey, that's cool, boy. I love y'all music, but don't bring that gangbanging shit. And why y'all singing hooks? Y'all love the fuck out of Drake. No oh, shit. We did this shit 33 years ago when hip hop said, why y'all singing hooks over hip hop? Yeah. All right, watch this, and I'm going to bring these facts up to you. Look it up, motherfuckers in the world. Shaq and Method Man got a song called No Hooks. Why the fuck you think he got a song called No Hooks? He's Shaq from the East Coast, right? Yeah. Soon as he came to the Lakers, let's see how many, how many hits. It wasn't, oh, my bad, it wasn't no hits. How many sales him and Method Man, East Coast cats, no disrespect and no love to East Coast. No hooks. Motherfuckers, the East Coast are singing. It's called Houdini before y'all. Yeah. Pay attention. Run DMC. Yeah. Hooks. Oh, maybe they wasn't doing hip hop. They right. was just doing good music from the East Coast. But as um, soon as we did it, why y'all singing hooks and shit? Shaq and Method Man got together before he got with DJ Quick and KK Shaq before he came to the Lakers, yeah. before those hits, before he went platinum and all that shit. So let's see if Method Man and Shaq's No Hooks song, look the fuck up on your YouTube and Google it. No Hooks is a song before he got with DJ Quick for them beats yeah. and KK for the backgrounds. Motherfucking right. He went platinum ago, didn't he? Yeah. Fucking with DJ Quick and them beats. 
Hey, I love party on the east side, but I love party on the west side, even though I miss playing on the east side. Motherfucker, go to platinum, huh? Yeah. Doom, 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 doom. The other, the other song, I forgot the title of it. We shot the video at LAX upstairs. Wu Tang and them was there too. Big Jake, rest in peace, and all the Compton niggas. Death Row was in the mix, but we ain't part of Death Row, but all the homies was there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Shaq video. The motherfucking tower at the fucking LAX. So, those two hits produced by Quick. What the fuck did No Hooks do with Method Man, Shaq? And full snickers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it took when you came to the Lakers and DJ Quick Production and the two fucking hits. I miss playing on the east side. I love playing on the west side, even though I miss playing on the east side. Motherfucker, get it right. Yeah. That's where the gold and platinums came in after DJ Quick's production. Exactly, exactly. Damn right. All right. Uh, my bad. No, it's all good. Let me go ahead and give my shout-outs. First and foremost, I want to say thank you, KK, for coming through. You know what? It's impossible for us to cover everything in one sitting. Mm -hmm. So maybe one day we're going to have to schedule a part two. Uh, Please Hopefully when it. I start drinking so that we can talk some real shit. Let's so, do it. Let's some, do uh, it. What was that one song? Punk Motherfuckers. Yeah. We'll be some punk motherfuckers. Rest in peace, Seven. Ronnie Baylor. Yeah. And the homeboy Albert Woods from okay. the, uh, school growing up with us. Okay, and I want to give a shout out once again to my team, uh, Norbert, News with Norbies. I want to give a shout out to him. I want to give a shout out to my boy Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise. I want to give a shout out to my son, B Scandalous, also to the hip hop Jedi. And once again, if you guys didn't watch my interview yesterday with uh, um, uh, B Real on Dr. Green Thumb, go check that out. That was uh, episode, I think, 288, if I'm correct. Uh, definitely go check that out on his on his podcast on Be Real TV on Dr. Green Thumb podcast. Go check that out. So I'll be back Friday. I got a special guest coming in Saturday, and I got uh, another guest coming in Sunday. So I got three Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's going to be busy. Tomorrow's going to be my only day off. So I'm actually going to go eat some sushi tomorrow night. So and I'm still not drinking. I'm still not drinking. And all you guys that ordered that cleansing tea, it's already been shipped out. Get at me if you guys want another one. If you guys want to give someone to somebody. Hit me and I'll shoot you all the info. Other than that, Boomer, Big Dog, much love, much respect to you guys for coming through. Other than that, um, Alex, do we got some uh, super chats? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Michael Rosas dropped $2. He said, I fools get high off Miss Pac-Man's chonies. <laughs> yes, they do. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, uh, Damien Medina dropped uh, 99, 99 cents. Okay, thank you for the 99. That's one cup of noodles. Um, I guess he dropped another 99 cents. Oh, no, it's the same one. Okay, uh, Ma Monte Carlo, uh, he dropped $2. He said, we don't dress up to mess up. All facts. All good. Thank you, bro. That's two Bobo couple dropped $5. He said, much love to the East Coast and, of course, the West Coast. Love, love to the Rasa and down. No, love to the Rasa that is down. Um, Rhodium Radio and everyone in the comments. Thank you. Salud. And then that's it. All good, man. Uh, other than that, Big Dog, any last words? I appreciate the love, everybody that tapped in tonight, you know, and I appreciate the love that came in through the calls and those on the comments uh, that I couldn't see. Appreciate yeah. Tony A and the platform tonight, y'all. This is West Coast Love and Traditional. Yes. 33 years plus in. Y'all give Tony A some credit. This podcast, The Rodian Radio. I'm Black Ass KK. One half a second to none. Gangsta D couldn't be here. Much love it's to all D. love, second to none. DJ Quick, Tony A. And I have to say this high CAMG. The latter. Mossberg, then Sugar Free. That's our crew. Y'all motherfuckers pay attention to it. Boomer did it. David Blake Jr. And uh, that's how we do that shit, man. West we Coast. We'll 33 years in. Y'all tune in next time. To Absolutely. Go cop that album. All right? Go cop Dedicated. that album. Yeah. Second to none. Support the West Coast. Much love, much respect. We out of here. Yep.